So, um, again, Freedom Vlog Masterclass is, of course, um, created, designed, and now organized by the Friedrich Naumann Foundation for Freedom. And this year, it's in partnership with Juniors, Junior Chambers International or JCI Manila. We also have the support of our friends from LSE Studios, Aperture, and Henry's Camera. So, ano ba yung Freedom Vlog Masterclass? Um, mas ma-explain yan, of course, <laughs> ng someone from FNF. And to formally welcome you all, may we call on the program manager for Klima, none other than Pearl Mars. Hi, everyone. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, clearly. Ayan. So thank you. Yeah, so thanks, Rochelle. So thanks again, everyone, for joining us tonight. I know it's very challenging given na lakas ng ulan. And then I think a lot of people are still on the road. Ako din. I have to run. Hindi <laughs> na, na ako umasa na makakasakay ako because mahaba yung people. Hello? 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 segue to basically what we what we are about to do um in the session so probably before i get to the um more a bit of explanation about what the freedom blog is so allow me to first introduce the foundation so project naman foundation philippines is one of the five german organizations um operating in the philippines so fns believes in the um values of liberalism democracy um, freedom and then curbing climate change. So on the note of um, climate change, on liberalism also and democracy and human rights, uh, we believe that um, freedom of movement is a human right. So that's why we are pushing for more sustainable transportation in the Philippines. So among the things that we are doing is to promote um, biking as an alternative mode of transportation at the same time, pushing for more inclusive, humane um, transport situation in the Philippines. So this platform, Freedom Vlog, is one of the things that we are doing, how we can try to um, push more sustainable transportation in the Philippines. Um, we envision that two Freedom Vlogs this can serve as a platform for us commuters to tell our stories, um, to tell what are the ordinary circumstances that we face every day so that the policy and the environment that, you know, um, that's going to be... Um, um, design for us is more inclusive. It's gonna be. It, 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 it's not something that you know a little rain could um could hinder us from basically going to places. Um, there was a study that was done last year that basically says, um, Filipinos don't recognize that transportation is one a very big concern for them, despite the fact that um we are on the road at least two hours every day. So that's basically two hours of our lives spent um 365 days that we are being um we said on the road just because we don't have proper um and decent transportation available for us so hopefully please make use of this time to tell our story so that our lawmakers could recognize that there's really a need to transform and move towards more inclusive more humane and sustainable transportation so on that note um snf is also a partnership organization so we very much a value um, the partnership that is being um, provided right now by JSI Manila to um, implement again the um, Freedom Vlog 2022. So, um, little bit of background. So, um, um, JSI Manila has also been working with us a lot lately on promoting transportation in, in the Philippines. So, we have done the Freedom Cycle just um, earlier this month, and we have guard, gathered more than 100. Actually, it's around 300 uh, bikers to promote naman, um, better biking infrastructure in the Philippines. So um, we're also very blessed today that we have here one of the speakers coming from Team Air Asia to talk about more the intersection of climate and transportation and the freedom of movement. We also have Authority Chad um, Osorio from um, Wiganagan University. <laughs> so... Um, and then also a lecturer from, from UPLB. So it's a very comprehensive um, thing that we are um, going to be delivering tonight. And yeah, so basically, um, thank you very much for joining us. Um, once again, thank you everyone for joining. Thank you, Jason Imanela, for the partnership. Thank you, Clean Air Asia and Aperture LSE Harris Camera 
uh, for this collaboration. So that's it. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, Pearl. O, diba? Ang dami natin this year. <laughs> Talagang we have a lot in store for everyone. Anyways, kaya pala quiet kanina ay dahil hindi pa nakrenable ang chat. But now, people are saying hi, good evening, and ayan, thank you for all your messages and we hope no na safe kayo wherever you are. <laughs> ayan, at hindi ma- maputulong yung connection. But Yeah, um I agree with everything Pearl said, ano? Um and ultimately the reason why you're all here is because you have an interest you have an interest also to help, to be part uh, to contribute and to to be part of the solution. Nang mga issues like what we're experiencing now, yung tipong natatrap kayo kasi umulan, nahihirapan tayong sumakay, for sure mahaba na naman yung pila. So sa mga, you know, sa jeep, sa terminal. So yan yung mga Um, gusto natin i-highlight but I highlight but at the same time um mag-spark ng discussion on to call for action sa mga ganitong um challenges. So again, Freedom Blog aims to promote and enhance smart mobility through creative storytelling and create awareness on the challenges challenges of transport sector. We want to promote, 'di ba, safer, sustainable commuting. Um, by sharing real-life examples or real-life stories and amplify the call for action. Hopefully, yung mga entries na gagawin nyo would, you know, motivate and inspire positive change. Hindi lang sa FNF, hindi lang sa JCI or sa mga speakers, but also sa magiging audience nyo. ba? Diba? So, um, yung masterclass na ito um, will equip you as a participants on how to create Content relevant, content relevant to the theme, which is yung freedom of uh, movement at yung smart mobility. So the sessions are divided into two. Yung una natin is yung advocacy building session, yun yung ngayong gabi. And then our next is yung content development session, nagaganapin naman sa Saturday, but that would be on-site. Okay? Pero bago tayo pumunta sa exciting part, hindi <laughs> pa rin tapos sa exciting part, ano? Um, si share muna natin yung mechanics ng buong um, program because after the Freedom Masterclass, connected siya actually to somewhat a competition. But, uh, sige. Next slide natin. Ayan. So, um, After this masterclass, no, you have to, of course, re- register sa online form. And I I know you did na kasi nandito na rin kayo. So you have to attend the vlog masterclass. Yung dalawa nating session, which is tonight and sa Saturday. And then, uh, after the coaching, you will come up, you need to come up with a minimum of 30 seconds to a maximum of a 60-seconder video. Ano siya? Portrait. Um, style, meaning yung perfect for TikTok at YouTube Shorts. Okay? Using yung storyboard and video techniques and concepts, of course, na matututunan nyo for the two uh, two-day sessions. Okay? Tapos, um, from your entries, lahat kayo, when you finish, when you um, successfully no, attended the masterclass, um, pwede na kayong maging participant dun sa Uh, 10 videos na pipiliin ng committee ng FNF and ng par- I guess ng partner which is JCM Manila. Um, yung 10 entries na yun will undergo a review session with the mentors again. Tapos they will be invited sa culminating activity natin sa July. So yung 10 final versions ng videos will be featured sa article ng FNF Philippines website and other social media channels. Um, bibigyan din yung mga vloggers, ika nga, no, freedom vloggers, ng 15,000 honorarium as contribution dun sa ginawa yung video. Tapos pag kayo yung pinaka mataas ang views sa TikTok, madadagdagan kayo, mabadadagdagan niya ng 5,000 pesos. Tapos lahat ng sampo na freedom vloggers will also receive a vlog starter kit from our sponsors. O di ba ang dami? <laughs> ang dami niyo namang marireceive just by attending, listening and learning, no? And then of course, creating a story out of everything that you've learned. 
Okay. So, um, di ko na patatagalin pa, no? Let's start the night um, with our first speaker. So, ang ating first topic is a climate change and its impact to transport system at yung karapatan natin bilang uh, commuters. We all, he will also introduce us to sustainable transportation. He is currently um, the sustainable transport lead of Clean Air Asia, an international rec internationally recognized organization committed to fostering environmentally conscious transportation policies. Additionally, he serves as a lecturer at UP, University of the Philippines, and the La Salle University. He is renowned for his unwavering dedication to the cause of sustainable transport and mobility and mobility, and he actively champions the imperative need for transformative changes in the transport transportation sector. So, wag na nating patagalin. Let us all, well, before that, the questions pala, no? Just take note of your questions and later, we will um, accommodate it after ng session ng ating dalawang speaker. Anyways, um, let us all give a virtual round of applause, I guess, <laughs> or mag-chat tayo, no? To our first speaker, si Raymond Abad. Hi, Raymond. Hi, Hi, hi everyone. Um, yeah, I hope you can hear me clearly. Good evening to everyone. And uh, also, uh, thank you to FNF Philippines for inviting me to this webinar. Um, and uh, I hope that uh, you'd be able to get some useful information for uh, for your uh, videos that you're doing. Um, so the flow of this presentation, which is... Uh, which will discuss the climate change and impact to the transport system and some introduction to sustainable transportation. Um, I'll just divide this quickly into three parts. So I will introduce first uh, our current or my current organization of Clean Air Asia. And then I will also uh, talk about some, uh, some of the research that I've done or that I did before before joining Clean Air Asia. So, major related din siya sa discussions kanina and our experience this afternoon, something on public transportation and flooding. And then later on, I will discuss something about uh, sustainable transportation. So basically, what we can do, you know, or what we uh, have to pursue in the future so that these impacts of uh, climate change to the transport system um, could be uh, mitigated. So, ayan. Yeah. Um, so Clean Air Asia, we are an international uh, non-government organization. So it, initially it was set up in 2001, basically with uh, a mission of, air, of Asia, Asian cities without uh, air pollution. So it was established first by the Asian Development Bank in 2001. And ever since uh, 2008, we're working as a separate non-profit. Uh, non um, our mission, as we've mentioned, is uh, reduce air pollution and greenhouse gas emissions in Asia and contribute to the, the development of a more sustainable, equitable, and healthier region. And um, our vision is a world with clean air, blue skies, and a stabilized climate for people and the planet. So for us to, to do this, to to live by our mission and vision, uh, we have two main thrusts or two main programs. So uh, I'm part of the sustainable transport uh, team, a diverse team working on various sustainable transport initiatives. And there's also an air quality and climate change, uh, uh, climate change uh, program. So for the sustainable transport team, we usually have three main focus areas. We focus on clean fuels and vehicles, green freight and logistics, and low emissions urban development. But we try our best to tie this all up in, in, and relate this no, into developing sustainable transport plans or programs for, uh, for cities or countries that are uh, interested. So, we do this in various activities. We conduct research, 
data, provide tools. Um, we assist government, whether at local or national level, in crafting policy reforms. But what's important is we also capacitate our decision makers so that they would be able to make uh, informed decisions. Then. So for, the, for, uh, for tonight, I will discuss basically the avoid, shift, and improve framework. And um, you will hear more about this later, but the idea of yung avoid, shift, and improve so aside from the usual, um, the usual approach of planning, na nakasanay natin na it's more of traffic oriented, moving streets, uh, moving moving cars on our roads, on our streets. We also um, we want to shift the um, shift yung approach natin in making our transport system more sustainable. No? so we do this by avoiding or reducing travel, yung mga unnecessary travel natin shifting from shifting from uh, carbon intensive modes meaning yung mataas yung mga emissions natin we go away from that and then improve the efficiency of vehicle technology and fuels so um if we can't help it but use uh yung mga vehicles natin uh we we try to improve its efficiency so that its harmful effects to the environment are limited so and dami no um are we we just we, we don't just work locally we also work in various uh, countries as well because the issue of um air pollution uh, is not limited to the philippines no so marami din ang ang gusto masolusyunan yung air pollution and we also do this at regional levels mga asean or with fellow asian countries as well we provide policy guidance our website is full of um different uh different knowledge uh, materials that are available and we also do some capacity building activities no in in various government institutions and we also engage um the community as well no because of course everyone is affected by you know air quality issues and here are some of the activities that we do as well uh, when we do some capacity building so we try to map yung mga air quality um yung air quality monitoring natin. I don't know if you've noticed no yesterday parang hindi rin talaga maganda yung yung yung, yung skyline natin medyo, it was a bit dark and at some point parang medyo naging orange pa no medyo related din talaga siya sa air pollution. So um we we when we do capacity building we assist governments in doing emissions inventory identifying San ba nanggagaling to mga mga yung mga sources of pollution na to? Okay. So, but why do we do this? Now, aside from the impacts to the environment. So, um I'm not sure if I'd be able to pose a question for everyone here, but the reality of of reality of air pollution doesn't is not just limited to yung environment. It also affects our health. Now, in 2019, air pollution contributed to around 7 million deaths worldwide. So, because of poor air, uh, poor air quality. You know? And some of those sources come from uh, PM 2.5, 7% of that. And later on, we will see that yung transport, your emissions natin from transport contribute to this PM 2.5. And if we're going to uh, natin yan to other to other respiratory illnesses and and, and cardiac uh, cardiac related illnesses so may kita na lang, as much as, as low as least 19 percent no um may relation no yung deaths that are attributable to total air pollution so you know it's also yung um you're still wearing masks when going outside um it's still useful no kahit yung sa covid if if you're if, even if if um or we're moving past yung sa covid pandemic already um it's still useful because of the um yung emissions na ano natin because some of these emissions actually go straight into our blood into our bloodstream and if you look at this chart it's not just you know if you look at it you you'll see that the impacts would be the young ones and the 
uh, and the old uh, old age groups no but if you're pregnant or even those yung mga buntis yung mga babies din apektado because uh, again no yung mga yung dumidiretso sa sa loob ng katawan natin so in the philippines um you will notice that the 10 top 10 risk factors have not changed mostly bumaba yung air pollution from 2009 to 2019 but what we need to point out here is that if you look at yung ibang risk factors natin yung other nine those are behavioral pero how could we be able to control the air we breathe no? so yung issue of air pollution so it's not just an individual issue no it also affects those that are uh, surrounding us so aside from health um of course yung pollutants that we uh we put out into the air you know, emit into the atmosphere also have impacts to climate change so of course we're already know this ever since we we're young no tinuturo sa atin yung concept ng uh, yung greenhouse gas emissions and how it affects um yung climate change na pag-uusapan na rin yung increase in global average temperatures no um yung meron, that's why we have some targets that we have to uh, limit it to 1.5 degrees or else magpapatuloy na talaga yung impacts on climate change and these impacts of climate change, um, yung changes you know, sa mga weather conditions natin, whether it could be too hot or too cold, could also have some impacts also in in some of yung health situation din natin. You know, because uh, yung um, some areas would be less uh, less habitable because of the temperature. Um, not just to humans, but also to some species. Pag na-affect yung, din yung biodiversity natin because of climate change, but also affect humans also, yung mga sources of food natin. So, nagtutuloy-tuloy siya. Okay. So, again, you have to understand the most vulnerable are most affected. And if we look at it, um, the uh, this graph shows that the transport emissions also are also the same now coming from different industries so yung mga pollutants natin those that affect air quality and those that affect um, the climate in general basically come from similar sources but tonight i'll just talk about yung transport lang, transport emissions lang tayo. so to round up bakit natin uh, why do we have to push for environment, environmentally friendly uh, transport system? Why do we need to push for a sustainable transport? Because of these impacts to our health and, of course, to the environment. So what do we need to do generally? If I'm going to uh, summarize yung call to action at them. First, we need to look for more energy efficient systems. Of course, try to shift away from yung gamitin natin, yung mga uh, those that are, you know, parang sourced from yung cleaner sources natin. If you're, we try to reduce our consumption of fuel and other sort resources. So if you're using your cars, uh, try to avoid using it, especially for unnecessary trips. Um, if you're going to use it also, try to, in, you know, engage in, uh, car sharing, car and carpooling as well, or basically just use public transport as well. Okay, and these also have some co-benefits as well to us. No, if we if we reduce our consumption, uh, we will have less costs, and again, may co-benefits din siya, um, for the environment and our personal health. Okay. Um, in terms of transport. So, punta lang ako diretso sa traffic emissions and air pollutant contributions. So, ano ba yung difference yung dalawa? Yung emissions, ito yung mga polluting substances na lumalabas din sa tailpipe. And usually na may measure natin yan. Um, if you register your vehicles, di ba, meron tayo mga, uh, mga, um, mga, mga, mga system to check the emissions also. Um, 
meron din tayong um, pollutant concentrations. Ito yung sinusukat ng mga air quality monitors natin. Yung DNR has this. Meron sila website. You can see also yung mga air quality nila. And ito rin yung minomonitor natin. I don't know if you also have that in your weather apps sa phone. Med tinitignan nila yung mga air quality, uh, yung air quality con conditions as well. And these are important because as you can see in, in this figure, yung emissions natin, yung pollutant natin, malaki ang nanggagaling sa transport. Okay? And if you check yung mga uh, documents natin, uh, check some studies, a lot of the emissions really come from the transport sector. Kaya dapat marami tayong um, ginagawa sa transport. So, let's try to bridge this to yung issue natin on climate change. Ano ba yung mga nagiging impact ng pag hindi natin nakokontrol yung mga emissions natin from the transport sector mostly to yung climate situation natin. So, Before I joined Clean Air Asia, so my research in the university focused on the impacts of public transport and flooding. And I did this because of my experience as a commuter, a public transport user during Ondoy. So med medyo at the risk of <laughs> revealing my age from my college experience sa Ondoy. So um, there are many studies already that um, have indicated that yung isa sa pinakamalaking impact ng climate change sa Pilipinas natin is yung rainfall. Uh, yung mga bigla ang sobrang taas or sobrang, uh, sobrang bigat or sobrang dami ng rainfall or yung mga um, monsoon rains na kala mo parang bagyo siya or yung mga, mga extreme weather events just like Ondoy wherein yung rainfall non-stop. Okay. So this has the greatest impacts in the country. And there have been recent evidence that shows that yung, yung, in, yung mga intense na pag-ulan, mas nagiging frequent siya more recently. Okay. So ano yung mga nagiging effect nito sa travel as a commuter? And all of us could generally relate to this. One, it affects our departure times. We, you know, it's either we leave earlier or we leave later, leading to some instances where we get late dun sa mga commitments natin. We miss classes, di ba? Um, others, yung nawawalan tayo ng public transport options because some transport modes become very inconvenient to use or for some reason, biglang kumukonti rin yung public transport options kahit maulan. So it's widely studied in the U.S., In Northern Sweden and in Japan. So, laging ganito yung nangyayari. Yung behavior, nag-iiba. So, nag-iiba ng sinasakyan, nag-iiba ng uh, oras ng pag-alis, or generally, it also affects public transport use. Yung convenience of public transport use also. And kapag nag-shift ka na from public transport to private transport, basically, you also contribute already to the emission. So, Parang nagkakaroon siya ng cycle, which is why we need to improve our transport services as well. So ayan, in some instances, it decreases bus ridership. And for others, umiiwas because of unfavorable weather conditions. But in the Philippines, it's very, it's usual, no? Parang I got these pictures um, from my research three years ago and, and I think you can still have the same issues no yung yung picture dun sa top right yung part na you would have to cross yung yung mga yung mga makeshift na bridges tapos sa dulo you have to pay this toll para hindi ka mabasa or sometimes you would have to use yung mga tricycles natin or pedicabs natin because we don't want to walk on flooded areas so may mga ganung instances din talaga so in our findings before in my research Um, kahit mababa lang yung mga paha, ang impact niya, malaki pa rin. No? Almost half nag-iiba yung behavior. Okay? Kasi ayaw na, syempre, ayaw din natin naman lumusong basta-basta sa baha. Okay? And what is the impact for travel? So, yung usual na one and a half 
hours na travel time during normal travel conditions nagiging almost two hours for an increase by almost 45 to 46 percent. So, ang laki nung, ang laki nung impact, no? And imagine if, you know, yung, 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 you still have other commitments to do this, uh, to, uh, for, you know, for other things, no? If you have a family to come home to, di ba? If you have, you know, if you have kids, or kung meron pa kayong assignment or homework na hindi naman matatapos, ang daming impact because all of this maapektuhan. I mean, for some, no, sabi nga, uh, for some, no, some of you are stranded. So, uh, ganun pa rin yung situation. And it's still a challenge, no, um, because mid, it's, itong period na to dreaded to for students. So, what more pa sa mga workers natin, no, because they don't usually get suspended dun sa mga sa mga trabaho nila. So, ano nangyayari sa transport? No, sometimes, we have no choice but to use informal transport services. So, yung mga pedicab na hindi nyo sila napapansin before, bigla siyang nagiging nagagamit nyo siya ngayon because hindi siya tumitire. Especially yung iba, tinutulak lang or pinapadyak kayo. So, ang laki bigla ng mga nagiging use ng mga ibang transport options na yun. And even research has shown that no that there is this versatility in ferrying people, and I think there's also a meme before na parang on sunny days it's twenty, tapos one twenty kapag maulan, but it's still useful. We still need those uh, transit services, and travel time. Minsan gusto natin umiwas. If you're using a car, you know where the flooded areas are. You will have to sometimes take circuitous routes. You mas malayo yung ikot. So, kahit maliit lang yung affected na may baha, we have a laki ng impact niya dun sa network, sa buong transit network natin sa Pilipinas. So, if you want to read more about it, um, we did the research on how it affected uh, transit users in Metro Manila. And one thing that, um, that we really found interesting there is that commuters, your transit users, really do not have that much of a choice. So, minsan, um, you you will expect na they would do some changes na para mag adjust sila. Pero, what if ito lang yung public transit option na available sa kanila? Which is the case um, more often than not. So, ayun, napipilitan sila. So, uh, napipilitan sila dun sa ganun situ- situation. So, what can we do if if we have already established this Um, relationship ng transport emissions and um, transport emissions and uh, and its impacts climate change. So this is where sustainable transport interventions uh, would have to come into play. So we always ask this question, no? if your tummy is getting bigger, what do you do? And we all know that the answer should be um, options B, C, or D. And but the easiest answer would be a you know, buying bigger clothes. Um, in the context of sustainable transport um, initiatives or interventions, we should always try to answer this by um, addressing yung key issues talaga. Okay, so it's also the same for transport. What do we need to do so that we can reduce transport emissions and its impact to the environment and climate change? So ito yung nabanggit ko kanina, no? Yung avoid, shifting, and improving. Okay? So when we say avoid, it's mostly encouraging people to travel uh, smaller distances or, or less distance. Uh, iwasan natin yung napakalayo. So this means kailangan siya na, kailangan mag, it's a planning idea wherein everything should be accessible to us. Okay? And then shifting, it means we encourage the shift from private car to public transport or non-motorized transport. Okay. And then improving, if we can't help it, we make the vehicles more, um, more efficient. Okay. So I'll just give some example in the, examples in the interest of time. One of the examples here is telecommuting. Yung mga work from home. Um, We saw this in the impact of working from home during the first 
few first weeks and months of the extended ay, ano ba yung ibig sabihin ng e? eh, yung, yung ECQ I forgot what the E stands for enhanced community quarantine so um, nakita agad natin yung effect na sa environment no? yung yung um, yung naging clearer yung skies we can see yung as far as Antipolo and then yung sa Bataan malino na malinaw but because what it does is it alleviates or lumuluwag talaga so walang excuse walang rason yung tao lumabas so if there is no um kung if everyone's staying home no one's on the road no one's no one's um the transport emissions are lower pero eventually habang nakita natin lumuluwag na ulit yung mga restrictions when people are coming out the next question is ano na yung ginagamit nila de ba kaya important ng time na yun yung efforts natin towards um cycling and i think our friends from out mobility here would be happy to share more about that okay so an challenge ngayon for telecommuting no if we're going to um promote telecommuting uh we should still encourage the use of public transport and non motorized transport because if we're if we're still using our private cars kahit naka telecommute ka yung impacts no parang in offset mo rin i mean di ka nga nag lumabas gumamit ng kotse for for work pero you still used it for other things no? so um we don't uh, we need to kumbaga combine it with other interventions and dito papasok yung shift okay shifting to um more more sustainable and energy efficient transport modes we use public transport you know in the case of the in metro manila we're lucky no mataas yung public transport shares natin na 70% the minimum so we still need to encourage this by improving yung public transport natin ensuring yung connectivity ng mga transport modes natin kasi imagine you no know, sometimes um kunwari ngayong umulan minsan yung buong trip natin na disrupt just because of one section that is flooded na wala tayong choices so yung connectivity ng transport services natin is also important. And then also, in terms of cycling, what's important here in this slide and sa right side is that tumataas. Many people, there's an increased uptake because we support it by giving uh, cycling facilities. Diba? And if we want to, uh, to inc further increase this, we need the infrastructure as well. Okay? So just aside from you know building these roads these expressways we also need to consider also the other users okay in terms of improving yung mga vehicles natin so marami tayong mga technologies that are available in our cars today so right now lahat ng mga sasakyan natin have these um filters those particulate filters that its main purpose is to remove yung mga particulate matter na yan uh, para hindi maging ganito yung puso. There's also some uh, nire-require yan na um, may mga technology na kasama sa vehicles natin. Also, yung, uh, yung nagiging um, dumarating na ngayon, yung electric mobility. No? I don't know if you've seen in some car parks that there are already some electric uh, EV chargers already to encourage the use of electric vehicles as well. And not just electric vehicles, but we also have um, electric public transport. You have your e-trikes. You also have your e-bikes. So those, um, those uh, personal mobility devices that also support the mobility needs of, um, of people across all sectors. So finally, there's also something that we could do in terms of um how we drive no yung driving behavior natin also have some impacts on the consumption of fuel and also the type of vehicles that we that we choose so um let's also be mindful of that no you can ask your car manufacturers no what um what is the fuel consumption the average fuel consumption of these vehicles so para rin maging aware tayo um so in some countries they have labels no parang nakalagay doon parang nakapaskil sa sasakyan na parang how much does this vehicle consume for 
this distance. So um, it promotes yung uh, promotes yung consumer behavior na for them to make some uh, more sustainable uh, choices. Diba? So that would be all for my presentation. So I hope I gave a, a good connection between transport emissions, its impact to the climate, how it affects us as commuters, and what we can do about it. So if you have questions as well, please uh, feel free to email me. The email is right there and also our organization at Cleaner Asia. Thank you very much. Thank you, Raymond. Ayan. Ako, marami na agad akong natutunan. No? <laughs> marami nang pwedeng ano, part ng content ng mga magiging video ng ating mga attendees. And again, thank you so much for sharing your research and all the insights that you have in relation to climate change at ang ating and its impact to our transport system. So, for questions, no, listan nyo muna yan on your end. Tapos later, after ng ating next speaker, tatawagin ulit natin si Raymond to answer that. Okay? Sige. Thank you, Raymond. Um, before I introduce our next speaker, no, I would like to acknowledge lang din the presence of one of our partners, si, si Dean Virginia Begano, the Dean of Office of Student Affairs ng Universidad de Manila. Ayan. Hello po, Dean. Magandang gabi. <laughs> Ayan. Sige, proceed na tayo. So now that you know no, yung, yung um, effects ng climate change to our transport system and of course our commuting experience, let's now proceed naman kung paano natin yun itatawid to the importance of freedom of movement, the promotion of our mobility rights, and the importance of having a people-centered mobility. So our next speaker, he is the director of Alt Mobility. It is a group of policy advocates passionate about making transport sustainable and inclusive. He was the transport planner for Pasig Transport and was also in charge of public, public affairs on progressive transport policies of the city of Pasig. He has collaborated with other transport planners in developing and implementing programs that promote active mobility and sustainable public transportation. Isa na dito yung bioeconomics that is also supported by FNA Philippines, no? Kung napanood niyo sa news, actually na feature yan. <laughs> At syempre yung uh, program ng libreng sakay ng mga LGU maintained transport system. So, di ka napatagalin pa our next speaker, no? Si Ira Cruz. Hi, Ira. Hi, good evening everybody. Kumusta kayo lahat? Uh, alam ko umuulan sa lahat tayo stuck. And I think I'd like to pick up from that. No? Na konting ulan lang, uh, hindi tayo baka uwi. Uh, but this is no different from what happens kapag uh, late naman at night. Wala tayong masakyang sasakyan. Uh, and that has a lot to do. And these are things that I'm sure alam na alam nila uh, ngayon. Ano? Uh, umulan, hindi baka uwi. Uh, so pag-uusapan natin yan, kung anong, ano bang ano bang implication or sino may kasalanan or kung ano yung root cause niyan ano ah uh, pag-usapan na natin meron ba talaga ang tinatawag na transport system sa ating bansa so let me just uh, set this up pinraktis ko tong mag-share screen kinina i hope it works okay great sige so hello my name is Ira Cruz i am one of the directors of Automobility PH Ah, uh, kami ay isang group ng mga volunteers, essentially volunteers kami lahat, mga transport planners, um, transport practitioners, uh, and volunteers from many sectors. At ang gusto lang namin gawin ay maging maganda yung ating mobilidad uh, sa buong Pilipinas. Okay. So, next, uh, I would like to talk to you tonight uh, about three main things. Yung una, yung estado ng mobilidad sa, sa ating bansa. Uh, pangalawa, usapan natin yung tinatawag naming commuter bill of rights. Ito yung Magna Carta of Commuters na final namin noong 2019, right before the pandemic. Siyempre, I don't want to leave you tonight uh, down and depressed. Mag-usap tayo ng mga ways of moving forward. Okay, so, but before anything else, I'd like to show you some familiar things. Uh, ito, yung mga, uh, ito yung picture ng mga bangkol. 
Uh, these are intentional designs, mind you. I also, so in my previous life, I was in marketing. Uh, and I'd like to tell you that these designs, when you enter mga retail stores, intentional yan lahat. Uh, and the idea, especially for for for, for profit for uh, organizations, ito ay for the experience, to, to improve the experience of customers. Uh, or in some cases, also to influence. And in this case, this is a picture of a branch of HSBC uh, where I used to work uh, several decades ago. Um, kapag pumasa pa sa HSBC, ang unang mo makikita, uh, mga ATM machines, deposit machines, puro Mac na yan. Tapos ang susunod, yung mga online bank, yung mga laptops, computers, and all that. Tapos yung teller, o yung uh, teller ba tawag doon? Yung teller, tawag na ng teller, uh, hindi mo yan makikita up until napakalalim na nung pina, or up, up until nap, nasa pinakaloob na na. And that, that, that is a very conscious design. Kasi ang ginagawa ng HSPC, ipinipreset mo na yung mga self-service machines. Uh, kasi mas efficient siyang gamitin sa mga transaction. And if you compare that, say for example, to local banks, pagpasang na pagpasok mo, ang unang mamakita yung cashier o yung teller. Tapos saksakan ng haba ng pila. Kasi wala tayong mapagpilian na ibang option para mag-deposit o kaya mag-inquire ng pera. So that's an example. That's number one. Uh, number two, this is Starbucks. I can imagine that a lot of you have been to Starbucks. Um, at kapag pumasa ko sa Starbucks, manonotice mo kapag ito ay pumipila, especially pag mahaba yung pila, uh, pinapaikot nila yan. At habang naghihintay ka sa pila, yeah, madadaanan mo yung mga tindahan ng thumb, yung mga nakadisplay na tumbler. Uh, at syempre, kahit sampu na yung Starbucks tumbler mo, bibili ka ng isa pa kasi ang ganda tingnan. And again, it influences your behavior kasi uh, habang nag-aantay ka, tinititigang ka rin nung, nung tumbler. No? At kapareho rin yan nung grocery. Habang ikaw yung nakapila, <laughs> tinititigang ka ng mga, mga juicy fruit, mga pagdagam, uh, battery, uh, toothpaste, toothbrush, uh, that encourages you or at least tries to in, in, influence you uh, to buy these little things. Na maliit lang naman, mura lang, pero it adds up. Pero compare, and, and this also applies to our transportation options. Compare natin siya dito sa retail experience uh, na, 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 na pinoprovide ng uh, Department of Transportation natin. Ano? Uh, and this is where I... So while design influences behavior, infrastructure in the same way also influences our behavior. And more importantly, it also influences our preferences. Ito yung binabanggit kanina ni Raymond na... Dito tayo ngayon mamimili. Ano bang klaseng mode of transportation yung gusto natin? So now, when you have when you see scenarios like this, they influence na tila yung behavior natin. Ito yung preference and yung ano yung kino-consider nating superior. At uh, syempre, ang mas gusto natin, yung superior, di ba? And therefore, we aspire for it. Um, whether it's, obviously, we're, I'm gonna tell you, that's the wrong thing to aspire for, pero you can't blame also people from 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 wanting to aspire for something that's convenient because we are at the end of the day humans and we are rational human beings and of course when you see sites like this uh, it also reinforces uh, why we aim for 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 what we consider now our superior forms of transportation such as owning our own private vehicles. Okay, these are more pictures. Obviously, uh, on the left you can see uh, na yung yung naka crutches. Uh, mas gusto na lang yung pag um, i-risk yung kanyang buhay na baka siya masagasaan kasi saksaka naman ang hirap nakakratches ka na aakit mo baka pa sa uh, sa sidewalk so the same thing you notice on the right halos di na magkasya yung mga tao sa uh, sa, sa bangketa no? uh, and sadly this is a photo taken before the pandemic and up until now ganyan pa rin yung itsura niya kahit nagkaroon na tayo ng pandemic and all of that ito pa yung isang scene na makikita natin sa mga himpila ng moose Sobrang siksikan. Hindi ka na makalabas kasi nagpupumilit pumasok yung mga tao sa loob. And again, the way that infrastructure and systems are designed forces people to behave the way they do. Kasi kung alam mo naman na may masasakyan kang moose in the next few minutes, predictable, hindi ka naman siguro magkikipag-unahan right away kasi may nangyari. Pero given the way that uh, the supply of our public transportation is uh, at this point in our in, in, in our country, Parang ka nagbabangayan, nagtutulakan yung mga tao. Na hindi na wala lang silang pangailang kung makalabas ka ba muna. Uh, basta kailangan makapasok ako. Uh, and of course, we are very familiar. We see this every day also. Uh, quite sad. Nakita mo naman. 
how many how much of city space is uh, taken up by private vehicles at ilan lamang sa mga lanes na yan ang nakaalaan para sa mga public transportation uh, would it uh, any transport economist will tell you or kahit hindi ka transport economist pag estimate mo ilan bang laban ng isang kotse uh, and of course the the average on studies is mga 1.2 uh, persons per car on the average one between two to two people and for the little for the same amount of space occupied uh, by cars uh, 60 yun katumbas niya sa public transportation okay uh, again ito pa yung isang example kapag tayo naglalakad minsan ang hirap maglakad sabihin na natin magka-tricycle na lang ako or magka-grab kasi yung disenyo rin ng ating syudad ay napaka-hostile para sa mga sa mga sa mga pedestrians no? nakita natin yung dalawang lak lakaran na ito uh, pataas, di ba? Ang hirap paglakad. Yung sabi nila, yung patag yung dadaanan mo, di ba? Patagilid. So, paano ka maglalakad ka? So, again, uh, if you notice also, uh, and once you notice it, get and see it, ang dami sa ating mga gas stations. Obviously, ito yung mga facilities para sa mga, para sa mga, sa mga sasakyan. Uh, sila yung nag-occupy ng mga corners, uh, corners ng ating mga, yung corners ng ating mga kalsada. At kapag in-occupy nila yan, nawawala pa yung bangketa. So if you look at the photo on your right, naglalakad si Kuya, uh, wala, nang, wala, nang, uh, wala nang bangketa, nabotin pa siya masagasaan ito uh, itim na kotses. Uh, itim. Okay. And then of course, we see infrastructure like this, di ba? To us, well-abled people, to us specifically abled people, hindi natin ito manong notice. Pero kung titingnan ito, saan ba naka-angle yung, yung pedestrian ramp na yan? Tama nga siguro yung angle niya, Pero kapag ito isang naka-wheelchair, bumaba ka dyan, uh, parang naka-aim sa gitna ng intersection yung, 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 yung rampa. No? So pag bumaba ka dyan, dinidiretso ka dyan sa gitna ng intersection. Whereas, di ba dapat inaanggal nila yan para naka-horizontal siya at nakatapat dyan sa pedestrian lane. Okay. And again, this is another photo. This is Commonwealth Avenue. Siguro rin sa buong Pilipinas, ito yung pinakamadaming lanes. Uh, ngunit, uh, pagtatawid ka from the right side to the other side, napakahirap. Uh, kasi napakadami ng lane na inallocate na sa kotse at bawal to bawal packet ka pa. And in my case, I'm riding a bike, which is my main form of transportation. Uh, kailangan ko pa siyang uh, buhatin uh, dun sa taas ng, sa, ng, ng, uh, ng, ano ba yan, ng, ng elevated uh, overpass uh, para lamang makatuloy ako dun sa kapila. Kasi pinaprioritize masyado yung pangangailangan ng, uh, ng mga nakasasakyan. Um, and so, obviously, what our cities, uh, the way it's designed, it's a very complex discussion. Uh, the way our cities have been designed greatly influence yung tinatawag natin freedom of mobility. So, so napaka complex niya, uh, pero suffice to say, the way that it's been designed greatly influences our freedom or the influence actually restricts or allows us for freedom of transportation. Unfortunately, yung mga tinatawag natin traditional experts have failed us in all of these decades. Uh, and while that is so, uh, the government is pivoting ever so slowly sa lahat ng mga bagay na ito, gobyerno yung pinakamatagal uh, mag-catch up. Uh, and unfortunately, the government accounts for a huge chunk of what really needs to evolve in order for us to have functional cities. On your screen is a copy of a DILG uh, document. Uh, ito yung uh, local planning systems uh, na hanggang ngayon ay ginagamit. Uh, and if you read uh, that section that I uh, that I that I that I highlighted on the right, kita mo naman, masyadong nilang pinag tataas taasan uh, yung kalidad o yung role ng engineers. And we can see that we are we, we are where we are today uh, because of engineering designs that do not take into consideration uh, the very simple needs uh, of computers and pedestrians. I'll give you a few more seconds just to read it um, and absorb it. Pero sana huwag yung paniwalaan niyo na basa ninyo. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, this is the document that the ILG gives to local government units. So hopefully, we have members of the bureaucracy that are smarter uh, than this handbook. Okay, but we, before we go any further, I want to make sure that we are on the same page uh, with some key principles and ideologies uh, na sinusulong namin uh, as alphabetity uh, para mapaganda yung mobilidad uh, ng uh, ng, ng lahat ng tao. No? Uh, okay, so I'm splashing some uh, some key ideas. Opportunities in cities. No? Yung mga, mga, marami tayong naririnig dati kasi sinasabi nila, oh, sige, i-, i, 
ano yan, i- decongest natin yung mga cities. Ang galing natin yung mga tao sa siyudad uh, para maubos yung tao sa Metro Manila, ilipat natin sila sa ibang cities. Um, number one, um, dapat tayo mag-develop ng ibang siyudad for the sake of wanting to develop other cities. Meaning, gusto natin i-develop ang Cebu, ang Davao, ang Ido-Ido for the sake of developing those areas. But it should never be for the sake of wanting to get rid of people in Metro Manila or in cities in general because cities work precisely because of people. Uh, at yung mga tao ay nagpupunta sa cities kasi nandun yung mga opportunities. At yung mga opportunities na yun ay available kasi may tao sa cities. At napaka-importante ng diversity sa cities. So, kung walang tao, walang city. So again, people are in the cities, people flock to cities, people want to be in cities because of the opportunities that they present. And in an international study, we'll see that by 2050, a large majority of uh, the human race will be uh, living in cities. Uh, on below that is 88% versus 18%. I think that number has moved since I prepared this slide. Nasa 96% na siya uh, versus 4%. What does that number mean? 96% of uh, Filipino households uh, do not own uh, their own cars, uh, which means that uh, 80% to 90% of road space is actually being allocated to the 4% nakakaunting tao na nakakotse. Uh, next, focus on improving mobility. Madalas na dinunig natin, oh, ang traffic, ang traffic, ang traffic. Paano ba isosolve yung traffic? Pero mali yan actually. Kasi ang dapat, ang dapat natin pag-usapan ay paano ba mapapaganda yung mobilidad ng mga tao? Pero hindi yung kung gaano kabilis tatakbo yung mga sasakyan. This is very, very recent news that MMDA released saying that the speed at which vehicles are not traversing EDSA are, is faster. And that's a very outdated um, metric but also reflects uh, the focus of MMDA on the minority of people in cars. Kasi kahit na masabihin mong 100 kilometers per hour ang takbo ng poche sa EDSA, Uh, 4% lamang ang tinatransport niya. No? Yung 96%, uh, nakatenga sa loob ng bus, nakakulong sa loob ng bus lane, uh, at nakakulong din sa uh, sa uh, faulty or defective ng mga bike lanes. Kung nabag-usapan na natin kanina yung infrastructure dictating behavior, nabag-usapan na rin natin yung real experts. Di ba? Nakita natin kung gaano kataas inagay sa pedestal yung mga engineers. Uh, ngunit nalalaman ba nila yung pinagdadaanan ng mga tao sa pang-araw-araw na may buhay para makapasok yung lamang tatlo na ba ako. Uh, number, uh, last one, yung, uh, second and the last, yung reducing car dependence. Walang masama sa pagmamaneho ng sasakyan. In fact, recently, uh, I took a risk and I wrote an article for of all magazines top gear, yung uh, favorite magazine ng mga car enthusiast in an attempt to say that at the end of the day, hindi naman dapat, hindi naman, hindi naman masama ang pagmamaneho. Ang masama, ay nakadesenyo ang ating mga syudad kung saan yung mga tao ay nagiging dependent sa sasakyan o kaya ay ina-aspire uh, magmaneho. Uh, at yung huli ko syempre yung freedom planning. Merong famous architect si, si, si architect uh, Spark Yunasan sa akin, yung lalaki na kaitin. Uh, sinasabi niya that transport planning is freedom planning. And as transport uh, experts, uh, as transport uh, practitioners, the way that you design the cities Uh, dictate the freedom of people that live in it. Okay. So, sana natandaan niyo yung mga principles na yan. Dahil babalik kayo natin siya maya-maya. Siyempre, if you have questions, I will be turning to, to, I'll be turning back to those principles. So, at the end of the day, ang sinasabi namin sa Alcubility, yung meters naman. Yung ating pagtuwin na napansin. Okay. In 2019, nabanggit ko kanina, sinayal namin yung tinatawag na Computer Bill of Rights. Uh, this is about, this is several slides that would follow Uh, hindi ko siya uh, titigilan isa-isa. In fact, I will just give you a copy of this uh, presentation para magkaroon kayo ng copy ng mga key highlights uh, ng bill. But essentially what this is, is that it codifies yung basic fundamental requirements uh, upang mapaganda ang mobilidad uh, ng lahat ng tao sa syudad. When we were filing this bill, wala kami makitang counterpart bill niya sa ibang bansa. Kasi eh, sa sobrang basic at sa sobrang fundamental ng mga bagay na ito, uh, hindi na siya actually kinukodify. But siyempre, in the Philippines, we're catching up. And we had wanted to file this bill in order to codify and to guide 
uh, government. In terms of the basic uh, facilities, features, principles, policies, um, infrastructure they should introduce in order to improve the lives of uh, people in the Philippines. Uh, pero papasadahan ko siya ng mabilis. Um, una, public transportation should be available uh, within 500 meters. Uh, ibig sabihin, kailangan pag lumabas ka sa iyong pinagbago, sa iyong sa mga iyong pinagtatrabahuhan sa bahay, dapat merong masasakyan. Dapat kasi ang hirap kung hindi ka masasakyan at kung lilipat ka man, sana yung lipatan mo ay hindi mo sana bibigyan sa 300 meters. Ah, uh, yung paghihintay mo dapat sa kung nakita niyo yung picture kay Dina nung nasa bus, nung na yung mga tao nagsisikpahan sila, nagtalakan, hindi nila alam kung anong oras darating yung susunod na, na books. So, kailangan dapat ma-manage yung supply para may dumarating na supply every 10 minutes, kahit man lamang sa peak hours. Um, yung public transport, dapat mabilis o ma-prioritize siya sa kalsada. Dapat yung 15 kilometers kaya niyang tahakin within one hour uh, at may kinalaman niya siyempre sa road design, ilang lanes bang bibigay sa bus, ipaprioritize pa siya sa traffic light, etc. 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 Uh, at siyempre, kailangan may maayos na infrastructure. Noong 1970s pa, meron na tayong tinatawag na building code of the Philippines na, nag, na nagsasaad na kailangan merong 2.5 meters wide uh, na, uh, na, na bangketa. So alam niyo ba yun? Kapag hindi niyo alam yun, nagulat kayo, mag-stop kayo ng message na nagulat kayo. Actually, 1970 pa, meron na yun. Pero alam naman natin na hindi lahat ng kalsada sa Pilipinas at may, ay may sign law. Kung ganun man kalapad yung sign law. Ito rin yung bike lanes. Kailangan uh, merong bike lanes na nakalaan para sa mga tao para magkaroon ng ibang opportunities yung mga tao na makapamili ng kanilang masasakyan. At the end of the day, we're not saying that everybody should bike. But at the same in the same breath, we should not create a scenario where people are forced to, to ride a car. We need to be able to provide people with alternative modes of transportation uh, that serve them better but also serve our cities better. Uh, may pinag-aralan ang Waze, which is a car app, na nagsasabi na the country with the, with the, that is, uh, the country where it is, uh, where it is best to bike is actually also the same country where it's best to drive. Uh, and that's because na ma-maximize nila yung space uh, by prioritizing modes of transportation na mas efficient yung paggamit ng city space. Yung city space, isipin nyo para lang yung budget. Paano nyo ba tinitipid yung budget nyo para ma-accommodate lahat ng pangangailangan nyo? And at this point, in all honesty, winawaldas natin yung budget natin o yung space natin para sa kakaunti uh, na road users. Uh, safe and convenient affordable public transportation. Uh, kailangan may infrastructure na tama para sa pedestrians and cyclists at lalong-lalo na uh, sa mga persons with disabilities. Uh, in fact, dapat ito ma-extend na yung infrastructure ay gender-sensitive ones. So, uh, Ito, pinag-usapan natin, fair share of road space. Uh, I won't, in this one, of course, uh, si Raymond talked about the importance of, uh, of, of, of managing this in order for us to clean, uh, to, to breathe cleaner air. Uh, at sama, dapat, meron ding information. If you notice, kapag ito ay nasa bagong lugar, uh, itatanong ka, paano bang sumakay dito? Magkano ba yung pamasahe? Saan ba ako sasakay? At napakahirap kunin at, 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 at gahagilapin yung information na yan. So, dapat yan ay available uh, kung saan man tayo magpunta. Uh, at in cases where masira yung ating sinasakyan, kailangan merong kailangan merong uh, uh, merong uh, merong appropriate na action. No? Kasi nangyayari ngayon, kapag nasira yung MRT, LRT, uh, iiwanag ka na lang, bahala ka na. Pero dapat merong uh, merong facility na tinatawag na redundant service na kung nasira man yung LRT or MRT, uh, hindi ka lamang nila iiwanan sa, sa roadside. Ano? Dapat merong uh, sasagot sa'yo. In, in other countries, may tinatawag na redundant bus service o kaya emergency bus service. Uh, nasisuguraduhin na ikaw ay makakapagpatuloy pa rin uh, sa iyong pupunta. Okay? Representation and participation. I'll skip this. We'll talk about it. In the, in the, I'll, take, I'll talk about this a little bit more in the next few slides. But essentially, what's important here is that there has to be a creation of an Office of Commuter Affairs uh, kung saan uh, makakadulong ang mga tao sa kanilang mga pangangailangan. Uh, kung napapansin niyo sa mga UV Express, may telephone number yung LTFRB, pero kung nasubukan niyo nang tawagan yun o kaya i-text, alam natin walang sumasagot yun. Uh, but also, the, office of, the creation of an Office of Computer Affairs also makes sure 
whenever government creates policies, the needs of commuters are taken into consideration. So they will be the representative of the commuters in all of government functions. Okay? So let me leave you with some five things, five really quick things that's very important for us to consider as we, as we, as we plan for better cities. Uh, one, public conversation. Napaka uh, dalang ng opportunity na tayo kinakausap at kinatanong ng ating mga, ng mga government, at, 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 uh, government leaders kung ano yung kailangan natin o ano yung feedback natin uh, sa, sa kanilang servisyo. No? Uh, if we go back to my example, HSBC, Starbucks, they design their stores in such a way na mataas yung customer satisfaction. Uh, at nung natatandaan nyo sa Starbucks minsan, nagsasurvey pa sila kung kamusta yung kanilang servisyo uh, at kapag ito ay nakasagot dito, bibigyan ka pa nila ng free drink. The same should happen in government. Uh, we should think of government as a product na as consumers, nakakapagbiklamo tayo. Pero how often are we presented with this opportunity? When I was in Pasig, nag-organize kami ng isang public consultation. But what I would like to point out is different about this public consultation is that number one, if you notice, wala siya sa city hall. Siya ay nasa kalsada. Kung saan kami yung nag-adjust, nilapit namin kung nasaan yung mga taong kailangan namin kausapin para hindi na sila mahirapan pumunta sa city hall. And number two, this was done during Sunday. Kung saan alam namin na may oras yung mga tao na umatid. Hindi ito ginagawa ng ng oras ng trabaho at hindi ito ginagawa sa araw ng trabaho kung saan walang makakapunta. So, pinawa namin ito kasi gusto namin makapunta sila at marinig talaga yung kanilang pangangailangan. Okay? Uh, marab- madalas natin narinig smart city. Smart city, yung mga main cameras, may mga high-tech screens, ganyan, di ba? Uh, but really, at the end of the day, what you really have to, to remember is that it's not about the technology or it's not about the sparkly uh, gadgets that we have. But at the end of the day, it has to resolve that those are just tools. And that at the end of the day, ang pinaka-importante metric para malaman kung smart bank iyong syudad, may gumanda ba ang kalidad ng buhay ng iyong mga uh, ng iyong mga citizens. Okay? Now, number two, it's all about information. Mahirap mag-disenyo. Mahirap mag-design kung hindi natin alam uh, ang 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 environment na pinag operationalize natin. Ah, uh, wala tong pinagkaiba sa science experiments natin, 'di ba? Sa sa high school, meron tayong uh, declaration of problem. Ano yung list of of ano, of data that we know. Uh, so pareho din dapat dito. At kailangan mo ng like data. At nabanggit ito kanina ni Russell, uh, nasa pagiging pagtulungan namin sa uh, alcoholity gumawa uh, sa, sa FNF, gumawa kami ng study na tinatawag namin bike comics. Uh, kapag pinag-usapan kasi before ang pag-disikleta, napaka-anecdotal. Yung mga sinasabing benefit nito, mga sinasabi lang natin, oh, nakaka-bawas uh, matupid siya, um, nakaka-maganda sa negosyo, uh, maganda, sa, maganda sa kalusugan, pero hindi natin ito nalalagyan ng, ng, ng peso amount. Ano nga ba yung peso amount na naka-akibat ang pag-disikleta? And this is one section of the Bikonomics. If you want to get the full copy Bikonomics study, you can go to the FNF website and you can download your copy. Uh, if you go to Google, all you need to do is type FNF Bikonomics and you will be led to the FNF website where you can download your own copy. And this is just a sample of that. Sinasabi namin, maganda sa negosyo in biking. And if you notice, especially during the pandemic, ang daming restaurant na all of a sudden, may bike crack sa labas, merong outdoor dining. At kinumpit namin yan na, na, na businesses can actually generate 25% more in revenue kapag yung parking lot nila sa labas ay ginawa nilang dining area o kaya ay nag-accommodate sila ng, uh, ng, ng bike parking. Uh, may picture ako dito. Uh, dati, ito ay parang parking lot ata na inaalotin nila. Ngunit yung ginawa nilang dining area at naglagay sila ng bike rack, sinasabi nung may ari na 20 to 30% ng kanyang kita ngayon ay galing na sa mga cyclists. Uh, bikes are also better for your budget. Okay? So pag ikaw ay isang owner ng bisikleta, tinatayang baka ka ng 282,000 a year compared sa pag uh, sa, sa owning a car. No? Yan yung matitipid mo sa gas, parking, maintenance, registration, etc. Uh, malaki din ang, 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 ang maititipid nito para sa gobyerno. 
Kasi sinasabi ng gobyerno, kapag tayo humingi ng mga programa, sinasabi nila, oh, walang budget, walang budget, walang budget. Pero, napakalaki ng budget na itinatapo nila para mabenepisyohan yung 4% lamang ng mga Pilipino. Para sa na yung 96%? Sinasabi nila, oh, walang budget, kaya ikakancel na yung service contracting. Oh, wala ng budget, kaya ikakancel na yung libreng sakay ng EDSA. Ngunit napakadaming pera na tinatapon uh, sa, sa pagkakonstruct uh, ng, ng, ng infrastructure para sa mga para sa mga 4% o para sa kakaunting na kapang pribado sa sakyan. Nagkinataya namin na for every kilometer of car lane, makakapag-construct ka actually ng 9.7 kilometers ng bike lane. At ang, for every kilometer ng bike lane, makakakibig tayo ng tumatagiging na 26 million pesos. So that's a sampling of bike economics. If you want to learn more about bike economics, you can go to the website of FNF and download your own copy. Okay, number three. Get on the ground. Marami sa mga marami sa mga government officials natin kapag nagko-commute, uh, ay nagko-commute lamang for public uh, for for PR purposes para masabi ng commute sila. But even if they commute in commute, kahit wala pang makakita, nagko-commute sila. Iba yung iba yung mararamdaman ng tao na nag-commute isang beses sa kanilang buhay versus mararanasan ng tao na araw-araw araw-araw na problema kung paano makauwi. Just like tonight, na umuulan, lahat tayo stuck kasi wala tayong masasakyan, baha, uh, bigyan ng ubusan, o kaya in this case, baka mabaha tayo o maulan na nang babasa o madiskrasya. Uh, so, napaka-importante for them to get on the ground and understand. And I'll show you an example na MNDA uh, refuses to allow uh, crossing sa busway. No? Kaya nangyayari, nahihirapan tayong sumakay ng busway. At ito yung experience natin na hindi na nakikita. Uh, this is this video was taken from the EDSA from the SM Mega Mall station of the EDSA busway. Kung saan nung bumaba ako, tanaw na tanaw ko na yung SM na pwede sana tumawid na lang ako ng 30 liters. Pero hindi, pinaikip pa ako. At ito yung experience ko. Lakit ka, lakit ka sa, sa concourse level ng MRT, nalabas ka, bababa ka, hindi ko tatawid sa kabila. Tapos, bababa ka. Tapos, pakibagsiksikan. Siksikan ulit. Malakad ng malayo. May basa pa. Yan. May baha pa. O, para, maka, para makarating ka lang dun sa pupuntahan. So, that's about 300% more effort on your party. Tapos, ito rin yung mas, ma, ma, masaklap na for a lot of people, ito yung hindi na-experience ng government. Magkita natin sa video na ito uh, ang isang experience ng mga tao na nagko-commit araw-araw. So, it's another working day for me, kaya samahan niyo ako pumunta ng BGC. Ayan, around 5.15 a.m. na ako nakasakay ng bus and usually 1 hour and 30 minutes lang naman yung biyahe ko. So, one video? First time kong magkocommute papuntang BGC area, especially sa new building ng JP Morgan. Kaya, on the day before ako mag-onsite, nag-decide ako na mag-commute muna para matansya ko yung magiging... Um, estimated time of arrival ko the next day. Ano na mga te, lunis ng umaga, sama niya ako mag-commute, punta tayong BGC. Alas tres ng umaga, kailangan nakaalis na ako ng bahay kasi kailangan bagong mag-alas 5, nasa alabang na ako. Wala talaga akong pasok today, pero need ko lang pumunta ng office para patingnan yung laptop ko. Kailangan bago mag-alas 5 na sa alabang na ako kasi 5am yung first trip ng shuttle to puntang office. Medyo buwis buhay kasi wala pa masyadong tao sa daan tapos ang dilim na nilalakaran ko dito sa alabang. Sa festival mall ako nag-aabang ng shuttle. And as you can see, ayan, parang halos ako lang yung tao, wapukang bakla. Medyo maaga nakarating yung jeep sa Alabang, papasado alas 4. So medyo mahaba-haba pa yung hihintayin ko. And then you've got these things that feel like they own the road just because they've got... Wow! How, unre how disrespectful! Okay, so yan yung videos ng mga nagko-commute na nakuha ko. Uh, actually on TikTok. Uh, and it reinforces yung parang sinasabi ni Pearl kanina na parang hindi na na hindi na na-realize ng mga tao na issue at problema yung pagkocommute no? kasi parang naging entertainment na lang para sa kanila or for them 
kinoconsider na nila itong normal. But if you can see this experience ng mga tao, nag-experiment pa sila ng trial run, di ba? Kung paano bumasa sa trabaho para ma- ma- ma-estimate nila kung ano yung time of arrival. Kasi hindi siya predictable, walang schedule, at hindi natin alam kung anong mode of transportation. Yung isa naman, kung pupunta lang siya ng BGC uh, para magdala ng laptop, kailangan pa niyang umalis ng 3 a.m. Imagine, alis ka ng 3 a.m. Uh, at kailangan mo makarating sa Alabang ng 5 a.m. And in this case, di ba ito sa Alabang ahead of schedule pa, so nag-intay pa siya ng masyadong matagal. So, this is also related to what Raymond mentioned earlier about how our cities are designed na napakalayo ng mga tao. Uh, for people that work uh, in BGC, they can't afford to live near BGC, which means that they need to travel pa and take public transportation. Kasi, what they always say this is another topic kasi urban planning at housing is not done properly. Uh, and if you mention, if you notice the video of the second to the last video in the uh, bubis buhay yung kanyang description. Kasi yung ating sidewalks, madilim, uh, walang proper facilities, uh, walang security, uh, and yung nagbabike, which is actually me, uh, matik pa kong, inatempt pa kong sagasahan. Uh, at dyan ay sa BGC na. Just imagine, if this is happening in BGC, uh, what more in areas uh, that are not as prominent as BGC? So, there. Yeah. Okay, now, it's very important for me to point out na napakaraming initiatives na ginagawa in a local scenario that I think are very exciting for all of us. In passing, for instance, there's a group of volunteers. Obviously, this is also a project that we did together with FNF na namigay kami ng free bike lessons. No? Uh, and surprisingly, almost 99% of the people that participate in the free bike lessons are adults na nahihiya pa kasi natatakot sila, akala nila puro bata. Uh, and yet, a lot of, and, and yet, 99% of the people that joined this almost one-year project uh, that we did every uh, every month, uh, 99% of the people participating are adults. And when we talk to them, it's because they want to be able to explore uh, a new form of transportation that is not as expensive, uh, that is more predictable, uh, and something that they can really rely on uh, to bring them uh, around for, for work, for leisure, uh, or even for school. Um, the so, local initiative of passing. Uh, this one is in uh, is in uh, Poblacion, uh, where a local bike shop decided uh, to to just do pop ups, uh, and as you can see, a lot of bikers came and occupied the street, uh, which actually gave uh, later on an idea that became a street festival, and uh, that led to an idea of a larger idea of creating a street festival. Uh, in Poblacion called San Piero, which happened about a few months after they realized that events such as this that bring communities together that take over the street um, is actually great for the community. And this benefited not only the bikers that visited, but also all of the endemic businesses in Poblacion that have been there for decades uh, because of discoverability. Now they receive uh, a regular or an additional set like customers. Yeah. So, pati yung sari sari stores sa gilid, nagkaroon ng customers, uh, residents na initially medyo unsure doon sa idea, bigla silang lumalabas, nilalakad nila na yung hasa nila, uh, nilalakad nila yung mga anak nila para ma-enjoy yung kalsada. Yan, at ito yung examples ng group picture nila. At lastly, um, while I mentioned in the beginning that national government takes a long, long time to pivot and understand its role and how it can better serve the people, the local governments is really a ray of hope. Uh, kasi, napakalapit nila sa kanilang constituents and because of the level of autonomy given to local governments, they can in fact uh, enforce or implement projects immediately. Ang kailangan lang ay sapat na political will. And these governments that I will, these local government units that I will highlight to you uh, are, are local governments that show a certain level of understanding of the of, of better mobility practice but also display uh, a healthy level of political will to deliver better services to their constituents. Of course, passing where I come from, uh, for several decades now, we've been having people's streets where we where we uh, convert uh, or we give back uh, thoroughfares in passing uh, back to people for them to enjoy. The photo of these two kids, interview ko yung tatay nila, sinasabi nila, first time, yung, batang, yung dalawang bata na ito, nakapam, na makapamisikleta sa labas ng kanilang bahay uh, because wala silang mapuntahang ibang space sa walang parks sa cities. And this is a note to, to for, for everybody that almost more than 50% of our city space is allocated for roads. 
at nagkukulang tayo ng mga parks para sa dalawang bata na ito. Uh, if naman sa manggahan, kung saan nagkaroon sila ng, 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 ng basketball court, kahit walang ring, naglalaro sila ng basketball, pero masayang-masaya sila na for the first time in their lives, naka-enjoy sila ng ganito kalaking spasyo na syudad. Ito naman sa sumilang, na-relieve yung kanilang uh, younger days kinsa nung bata pa sila daw tumatambay sila sa labas ng kalsada kasama ng kanilang mga magulang at nag-invest pa sila sa playground na ina-assemble sila tuwing linggo at sabado para ma-enjoy nung kanilang kanilang mga anak. Uh, of course, we all know Session Road in Baguio kung saan nagkakaroon din ng street market and there's even space for creativity, space for artists to display their craft uh, and most impressively, yung tinatawag na Fatima Avenue sa Valenzuela. While Session Road in Pasig, uh, well, Session Road in Baguio and all of these streets in Pasig are only closed, are only given back to the people every Saturday and Sunday. Sa Valenzuela, ibang level sila. Yung Fatima Avenue, sinarado na nila permanently uh, para isoli ito sa mga citizens, sa mga kanila mga constituents. And in so doing, nagkaroon ng places ang mga tao para mag-form ng communities and at the same time, the benefit yung mga businesses na nagsara noong pandemic. Uh, meron din magandang mga interventions ang ating mga pag-government units. Nagkilala nila yung kanila mga, yung mga kanila mga constituents, ano nila yung pangangailangan at a very intimate level. Nagkaroon din sila ng kanya-kanyang bike lane design. Ano? Uh, itong nasa kaliwa sa Commonwealth, uh, merong contra flow Uh, this is Commonwealth on the left, Makati on the right, this is JP Rizal, na may contra flow. Kasi nga sa saksakan ng laki ng kalsada at hirap tumuwit sa kabilang side, na-realize nila. Baka dapat magkaroon ng, uh, two, ng, ng bi-directional bike lanes. At yun naman sa Makati, ganun din. Okay. So, as I mentioned, I want to leave you on a, on, a, on, a, on a better note, on a more positive note. Uh, and so, We really just need to be able to understand the correct intervention and structures to be able to improve uh, mobility for everybody. And mobility, regardless of your choice of mode of transportation, affects everybody. And at the end of the day, it should really be about the people. Sinasabi namin, move people, not cars. So that at the end of the day, tatanong natin yung sarili natin, how free are we in our cities? That's it. I hope that helps. Yeah, thank you so much, Ira. It really helps. I mean, and dami ko for sure maraming natutunan ng lahat, no? I've seen sa comments, sabi niya, very relatable daw kasi na-experience din nila yung mga napakita mong videos, yung mga na-explain mo and all. Um, sa sobrang dami nang na-share, ano, parang ang hirap na magtanong kasi na-share na lahat. But, you know, we still encourage everyone to type in your question. Don't be shy. Um, it's an honor to be with Ira and Raymond. Sila yung mga tamang tao who can answer our questions. So, So, given that, no, may, actually, may isa tayong question dito. Sabi ni Lino Lagonsal, I guess, this question can be answered by both Ira and Raymond. Sabi niya, mentioning all the problems about the Philippine transport system, what can we expect from the commuter's mobility and the system itself 10 years from now? Siguro, si Ira muna more on the transport angle. And then, maybe si Raymond, no, with the Um, changing climate, no? Ano kaya yung ma-expect natin sa future of transport sa Pinas? So, go ahead. <laughs> Ira. Uh, thank you for that wonderful question. Uh, <laughs> um, Unang-una, simulan natin dun sa transport system. I hate to break it to you, pero wala, wala, walang sistema. Uh, kasi pag sinabi mong sistema, Ibig sabihin, you have several components that are orchestrated or, this or, or that orchestrates and coordinates with each other. Wala tayo niyan. Imagine yourself coming out of your house. Paglabas mo, wala una, may sidewalk pa. Kung meron man, yung sidewalk ba na yan, iahatid ka sa sakaya ng, ng jeep. Uh, kapag ikaw ba nagpunta sa sakaya ng jeep, Ah, teka lang, pag nakita mo sa sakay ng jeep, nakalagay pa, no loading, unloading. Kung nasan yung waiting shed, no loading, unloading. So, lalakad ka pa, uh, kung saan ba, wala ka mo, wed, nasasakay ka ng jeep. Pag nakasakay ka ng jeep, yung jeep ba, tatapat sa MRT station. Siyempre, hindi pwede kasi pagdating doon sa babaan ng MRT station, either nilagyan ng MMDA ng fence, o kaya nakalagay ulit, no loading, unloading. So, nasasakay ka ngayon. So, hindi ka ngayon makakasakay. 
pagbabago, syempre, pag ganun, pabalik din. Pag nakasakay ka mag sa train, aakit ka sa taas, magba ka, and so on and so forth. So, yun yung sinasabi namin. Wala tayong masasabing sistema. Kasi at the moment, wala tayong masasabing orchestrated system. Kahit bangketa, hindi sunod-sunod. Kahit bike lane, hindi tuloy-tuloy. Uh, so, that's number one. Now, 10 years. Ano naman ngayon yung 10 years? In all honesty, hindi ko alam. <laughs> Kasi ang daming nakasalalay sa sa decision ng mga government officials natin here. Obviously, um, obviously uh, civil society organizations like us work very hard uh, to pressure government. We work very hard to collaborate with them. We work very hard to helping them develop capacity uh, in order to in order to effect these changes. And this can only go as far uh, as they want to take it. In fact, we're working on uh, a white paper, again, with the help of FNF, where we will detail, ano ba yung problema, kuya, nitong mga, na mga government agency, agencies na ito. Sino ba yung mga government agencies na may kasalanan talaga kung bakit hirap na hirap na But also at the same time, I'd like to point out to you guys that we are, para tayong bibingka, no? I'm sure you've heard of this analogy, merong pag nagluluto ka ng bibingka, may init sa taas, merong init sa baba. And as a civil society organization, kami nag-a-apply ng init sa taas. Uh, pinapressure namin yung government, nakikipag-undayin kami sa kanila, nakikipag-usap kami sa, 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 sa media para ma-broadcast yung aming position. But at the same time, I think this is where you guys are gonna come in. Kasi gagawa kayo ng mga videos. Uh, and we need your help to come up with unconventional solution to convince people to to join the advocacy. Kasi yung mahirap na part sa advocacy eh, is to be able to develop and bring people to a certain level na may pakialam sila. Uh, how do then, how then do we, are we able to make people stand up uh, and take up arms to do this. And hopefully, uh, with your help, eh, yung init sa ilalim, yung init sa taas, malulunto natin yung transportation system. Uh, and sana in less than 10 years. Tama. Sana in less than 10 years. <laughs> Asap nga sana. <laughs> Pero, ayun. I hope... Kasi yung, sorry, Lucille, kasi yung promise ng DOTR noong December 2022, ipaprioritize nila ang cyclist and pedestrian in the next five years naka-splash yan sa inquirer. So, we're singin din natin sila. Tama. Accountable. Dapat yung mga nangangako. So, isa yan sa malaking magiging contribution nyo no, as content creator, yung pag-amplify ng call for action natin. Thank you, Ira. No? Let's ask naman Raymond din, no in the changing climate, Ano kaya yung ano future ng transport system natin? Ngayon, I think may picture agad ako nakita, binahana naman somewhere. So, na-stock yung mga tao. Go ahead, um, Raymond. Um, I just like to add also, no, um, yung ano bang mga transport infra rin yung inaasahan natin matapos in in 10 years. So, um, I think we already uh, were aware, no, marami tayo mga rail projects na matatapos. So, hopefully, kapag matapos yun, it could also encourage, you know, more modal shift. Um, kung titignan din natin yung alignment, especially even yung sa subway, no? para nandun siya sa bandang eastern uh, eastern corridor ng um, ng Metro Manila. So, um, that could also uh, support yung transport needs nun sa area na yun, yung mga nasa Taguig, or where we work also in Ortigas, may mga tatamaan na area. Which in reality, if you're going to look at yung mga high-capacity public transport services along C5, dun din tayo nagkukulang, no? so, which is why yung, yung pagtawid natin sa east-west. So uh, east-west medyo mahirap. Um, so ayun nga, maraming rail. Next question for this one, no? how will our road-based public transport system support this one? Kasi, okay, hindi nga, mabilis nga yung rail natin, no? pag mag-trend ka, o pag baba mo naman, paano ka na? Diba? And even yung challenge nga nung pagpunta mo doon sa stations, no? I think makikita nyo siya sa, ayan na naman yung mga memes na parang umaakyat ka sa ganyan. So, we also need to, sa ibang bansa, they have this, yung mga checks na parang, um, yung mga vulnerable groups natin, no? Parang we have to advocate for them. Kasi dun natin malalaman din na yung, yung mga transit services natin is for everyone. So, 
tanungin natin yung mga yung mga may disability, yung mga yung mga matatanda, yung mga mga, mga school, yung mga go, people going to school, yung mayroong mga may dalang mabibigat na bag. Magagamit ba nila yung mga transport um services natin? So with that, maraming opportunity. I mean, yung isa sa mga pinakamalaking change na nakita natin yun sa EDSA carousel nung, nung COVID during the pandemic. It's not perfect. It's, you know, but it's it's a huge uh, step um, improving yung bus corridor dun sa EDSA. There's still a lot to be uh, improved in terms of our road-based services. Yung modernization, again, not perfect too in terms of in reducing your emissions coming from the transport sector. Marami ding mga issues in terms of just transition, kung, access, kung accessible ba or equitable to our drivers as well. So, we, marami pang mga questions. No? Pero, I mean, we also have to acknowledge that there are some efforts uh, pa rin. I mean, from the time that I was in college versus the time that yung ilang years na work. And that's also where yung civil society groups come in, civil society organizations. Um, before, we only have yung experts who will talk about these numbers, uh, yung science behind yung mga transport needs natin. But, you know, it, it, ba yung naging impact niyo of putting a face dun sa mga transport problems? If you look at yung mga JICA studies, yung 1996 na studies, you will see there that the problems that they defined there are still the same problems that we have right now. Walkability, yung, yung sidewalks, absence of sidewalks, yung, mga, yung protection of uh, pedestrians. Those are the same recurring issues. So yung challenge dito in the next 10 years, we may have this, you know, a, a, an expanded transport network, pero do we still have, have we done something towards these small items na laki ng impact sa ano natin sa transport natin and and pag matuloy-tuloy siya pag ma-address natin yung connectivity na yan then mas malaki din yung magiging impact na dun sa climate so it's not just wala wala talagang silver bullet unfortunately kailangan merong sunod-sunod siyang program but it would start with yung anong vision ng government at least ngayon meron ng meron ng mga clear na ano, you wouldn't see that 10 years ago, di ba? Yung funding for road-based transport, again, thanks to the civil society groups na talagang kinukulit sila na for that. So, meron ganun tayong progression and hindi tayo dapat huminto doon because there's still a lot more na nangyayari and not just limited to Metro Manila, pag lumipat pa tayo sa ibang metropolitan areas, pareho lang din sila ng na-experience and more or less papunta rin sila dun sa same situation sa Metro Manila. So, kailangan din natin bilisan kasi madaming sumusunod sa path ng Metro Manila. Thank you, Raymond. Ayan. So, both answers ni Ira and ni Raymond, I guess the question is not just for them, but for all of us na 10 years from now, nung mangyayari, it's really up to us din, no? As Ilang sama-sama tayo kumbaga sa solution. So sabi rin niya no, mara- malayo na pero malayo pa. <laughs> kumbaga, yung mga dapat nating gawin. But of course, you acknowledge yung mga small wins na na meron tayo. Okay, sige. May next question no from bi- Biyaheng Bike ni Mike. Oh, this is for Ira as a biker din. Sabi niya, I'm a bike commuter for 3 years now. My daily route is EDSA Pasay to EDSA Show. I work in SM Mega Mall. I would like to ask how to, hindi ko sure kung malasagot ni Ira but maybe may touch kasi based on experience. How to handle aggressive motorcycle riders who uses the bike lane? <laughs> okay. Ganito. Um, meron, dalawang, meron akong dalawang answers. Yung isa hindi ko sasabihin dito. <laughs> Pero contactin mo na ako. I'll give you other tips. But on the offense, just kidding. Um, but not really. Um, there's a, there, there there are really different ways to know. It, again, this is a, this is representative of um, the type of infrastructure that we have on on, on our cities. No? If you think about it, saksaka ng dami ng nakamotor, pero wala silang infrastructure para sa kanila. Masyado silang inopress. Whereas if we remember 
way back in 2020 when the when the pandemic exploded and erupted and you know changed our locked us our locked us in our homes. Ang laki ng inasa natin sa mga motorcycle para dalan tayo ng pagkain, magdala ng groceries, magdala ng kung ano ano. And yet this is how we're repaying them. Na apat po na wala talaga nang hinihingi sa gobyerno na bigyan sila ng sariling lane. Um, hindi pa rin sila binibigyan. Uh, kung bigyan man sila ng lane, pinagsali, pinaghalo pa sila sa truck. Ikaw man yung nakamotor, bakit ka susunod sa likod ng isang pagkalaking-laking truck na pwede kong mamatay? Uh, so I think that's one. No? I think one very important thing to keep in mind uh, is that, uh, number one, hindi tayo magkakaaway. Na tayo ay road users. Um, kailangan tayo magbigayan. Ano? Uh, number two, hindi natin kasalanan. Hindi to us versus them. Ito ay kasalanan ng gobyerno na dapat nating singilin na ayusin yung allocation ng road equitably so that people will be served properly you know, and safely. Um, so yun, kailangan sige natin yung pangalawa. Um, yung isang tip o na nanonotice ko na nag-work ay kapag in-eye contact sila. Kuya, padaan naman. Eh. <laughs> that always helps. Kasi I think at the end of the day, This is what happens sa mga cars, no? Ang ang hilig-hilig mamusmi na ng mga nasa kotse. Kasi protected sila in uh, naka-protect sila ng kotse, no? Naka-disguise sila. Hindi mo alam kung sino sila. Uh, ngunit kapag nilabas mo yung humanity mo, uh, be- between each other, nag- nag-eye-to-eye contact kayo, sana magbalagkit, um, at nagsabi nyo, kuya, padaan naman, no? Almost always, papadaanin ka naman nila. Or minsan, because nagmamadali sila, Uh, pag sinayin mo, oh, kuya naman, sinigitan mo ako. Nagsasorry sila actually. And this really helps me uh, survive it. Sa, ano. um, now, ang isang trick din nito ay if you are feeling threatened, again, this is this one is the parental guidance kasi you also have to gauge your own skill as a biker. Uh, there is a study in Australia that says that um, taking a full lane uh, actually enforces your safety. Kasi kapag ikaw ay kinuha, kinuha mo yung buong lane, meaning gumit na ka, it creates a psychological uh, effect na you are forcing cars or motorcycles in this case to overtake you fully. Ngunit kapag ikaw ay nag-try gumilid sa isang lane, you're giving them the indication na tabi kayo. So sisingitan ka nila at mangyayari, magiging kit at pwede ka magulong. But again, this is, this, dep- this is a case-case scenario. Uh, and also depending on your uh, on your level of uh, skill. So again, sa akin yung tip ko, continue natin i-push i- i- sa government na magkaroon ng, ng infrastructure para sa mas nakararami. Uh, at then the cool heads would really prevail at let's humanize each other. So sabi natin sila, kuya, badaan naman. No? And believe it or not, you'll be surprised kasi ang papadaanin ka pa nila. Nagulat ako one time nasa motorcycle ako, sabi nung, nung drive ng motorcycle sa rapid ko, atras ka ng onte. So, kalo ko, away niya ako. Yung pala, umatras, pinapatras niya ako para makaatras siya. Tapos pinadaan niya ako sa gitna ng, sa gitna ng dalawang. So, that's very important. So, um, in order to also address uh, what, what Raymond mentioned earlier, tama ka, uh, and I'd like to echo that, na ang daming-daming mga cities na ngayon umuusbong. No? And sadly, they turn to Metro Manila and they copy the mistakes of Metro Manila. So, let's prepare the other cities so that they'll be able to design with a clean slate without having to go through the same problems at Metro, uh, same problems and mistakes that Metro Manila did. Uh, at tama rin si Raymond na ang laki ng tulong ng civil society sa pangunguna ng Movas One Coalition para masigurado na may budget para sa road-based transportation uh, ang ating DOTR. Uh, at Raymond, baka hindi silver bullet ang hinahanap, baka dapat pink bullet. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ira. Thank you. Na, ano ko lang, no? Echo ko lang din may nag-comment. Sabi nga, infra dictates behavior. So, somehow that encapsulates yung sagot ni ni Ira, no? Doon sa tanong. Um, sige, um, because we have another uh speaker. So, I'll just raise one more question. One last question for the, for the, for Ira and Raymond. Maybe Raymond mauna naman. Um, Ano lang, given, you know, from your perspective as an expert on the climate change related to transport and all the challenges that we are facing right now, siguro ano, um, anong tips or advice natin sa, sa mga content creators na nakikinig ngayon? Um, given that, of course, sa, sa process ng program na to, maybe soon, yung top 10, Maria Rubinio and all, siguro tips lang on the content creator, ano ba yung mga dapat nating 
ini-emphasize um, to address yung pinaka-advocacy ng Freedom Blog. Sige, go ahead. <laughs> uh, I, I think um, following London kasi dun sa question kanina, no? um, we have to understand that all of us are experiencing the same transport issues. Ang ang masama kasi na, ang hindi kasi natin maganda nakikita ng trend minsan sa conversations sa social media is that we try to um turn against each other yung narrative na motorcycle taking the bicycle lanes na parang sasabihin na tanggalin mo yung bicycle lanes kasi gumagamit ang gumagamit na lang naman yan yung mga nakamotor tapos alam mo yon parang but in reality what yung main issue natin na ano dito is um yung traffic congestion and ano mo mas solution din yung traffic congestion babalik at babalik tayo sa improving the transport system so i think one key message here is that we we don't have to parang point fingers na parang alam mo yun hindi kasalanan mo to kasalanan mo yun. what we really need to understand yung transport issues it affects everyone diba? and we need to you know encourage or parang sometimes to really push your this our decision makers to really think about this because it doesn't just affect one group although kahit pag makikita mo sa picture parang isang group lang talaga affected but it affects everyone diba and once mag come across tayo dun sa message na yun na parang lahat tayo affected dito. Tingnan mo, ngayon umulan. I mean, kesyo may kotse ka, may naka, gumagamit ka ng public transport, naglalakad ka, lahat tayo affected. So, there should be this advocacy that, alam mo yun, na yung tipong, that would, um, that would really help us understand that this is an issue affecting all of us and that really needs attention uh, for immediate action din talaga. And in terms of yung impacts na dun sa environment, um, mahirap, uh, it's a challenge sa totoo lang. Yung looking, um, yung, yung i-relate mo dun sa climate change, ganyan, ganyan, in the climate change conversation. Uh, even for us at Clean Air Asia, we, we really work hard on yung communicating the science behind uh, climate change. But what would really help again is telling the stories of individuals who are affected by this and yung mga vulnerable groups that are affected as well. So yung challenge ng commuting or using public transport when on an ordinary day versus when it's raining, di ba? Na parang, parang ang question din natin, will this be the trend? Na parang ito pa rin ba yung mga same people that will be affected? So ayun, um, Uh, humanizing also yung mga, yung mga issues na na experience would also have this great impact and probably would really mobilize yung for future action then for this. Thank you, Raymond, for that. Um, and then Ira. Um, I'll start with you. I think for a lot of us here, uh, at one point, nakita natin yung TikTok video ni Michael Diniso of Patrol ng Pilipino. Uh, and what he did there that made it very successful is that number one, it was spoken in very clear language, uh, clear conversational language. Hindi siya, hindi siya dating na reporting. Na nag-uulat sa EDSA, ganito, ganyan. But he made it very conversational. And I think that's very important because it increases the relatability and it creates a conversation. Uh, and it shows your authenticity uh, nung nagpikwento sa iyo. No? Uh, of course, Filipinos love humor. So, dinagbigay niya ng konting humor. Naglalakad siya, biglang, oh, boom, pati. Or, tapos, pag-gubawa niya, nadulas siya, and I think that was intentional. Pero, gusto ko siyang matanong. Uh, I'm actually excited to meet him tomorrow. Uh, tatanong ko siya kung nadulas pa talaga siya. But it's a very, very, um, uh, it's a very, very effective storytelling. Kung saan it really captured the imagination of people. Uh, and it was done with such authenticity uh, that people could relate to it. Um, So ang challenge talaga sa, in, sa inyo is to be able to create that kind of storytelling uh, that doesn't just entertain you, uh, but also allow people to see what life is like uh, in the shoes of people that commute every day. Through that video, even if you weren't commuting, you'd be able to experience what it's like to walk ahead sa yung nagsisiksikan kayo, yung magkatalikod kayo, 
pababa yung isa. And, and, and through that, uh, I, I feel that a lot of people were inspired to know more. And so that's the two challenges. One is how do you then get them to a point where they are able to experience firsthand through authentic and relatable and reliable stories uh, and inspire them to ask for more. And at the end of the day, you have to have a very clear call to action. So now that I know what this is like, what are you doing Thank you. Again, thank you, Ira and Raymond. Ayan, sobrang dami nyo ng pwedeng content. <laughs> Buno na. <laughs> paano nyo, ang challenge, paano nyo mo pagkakasya sa 60 seconds? <laughs> but again, thank you, Ira and Raymond. You'll hear more from them, no? Lalo pagka napasama kayo sa top 10 because they'll review your entries again and might have a one-on-one -on -one session. Let's all thank them via the chat. So, kami hiyang mag-chat. And of course, napakita rin nila yung mga um, social media accounts or email address where you can reach them. Or even ping lang kami sa FNF if you have projects that you want to propose. So again, thank you so much, Ira and Raymond. Ayan. Sige. Hindi na natin patagalan, no? Ang um, ganda nung sundan ko lang yung last na uh, statement ni Ira, no? More on storytelling, how to be creative in terms of storytelling, yung pagdagdag ng humor. Um, paano ba magiging effective yung mga memes? Yung mga nagtitrend sa ating ano, TikTok. So now, our next speaker, he will talk about um, thoughtful and empowering vlogging. So matatouch natin yun yung part na yun. So he is an accomplished international academic and lawyer economist dedicated to advancing human and environmental rights. Beyond his professional pursuits, he actively participates in environmental and community initiatives, leveraging his expertise to create positive change in underserved communities. So let us all welcome Chad Osorio. Hi, Chad. Good evening. Hello, Rousseau. Hello, everyone. Can you guys hear me? Yes, clearly. So go ahead. Okay, great. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I see that we have 103 participants here. and. Uh, would it be okay if you guys give a thumbs up if you guys are still awake? Alam ko late na dyan sa Pilipinas, kaya um, ayan, okay, may naka-raise na ng hand. Okay, yes. So, hindi lang thumbs up. Ay, ay, okay. Uh, ayan, oh, yung iba, dalawa yung hands. Yung iba, dalawa yung... Okay, nice. Okay, ma ay, yung iba ang daming thumbs up. Grabe, ilan yung kamay mo? Okay. Ayan, maraming salamat sa lahat ng um, tumugon sa aking pa, sa aking um, simple request. Pero yung mahirap sundan yung dalawang speakers natin kanina kasi sobrang saya nila at sobrang engaging. And interestingly, marami dun sa sinabi nila. Um, sasabihin ko rin in a bit, pero probably phrased in a different way. So hopefully, um, makukuha nyo kung ano yung sinabi nila. Tapos yung sasabihin ko rin, tapos mapapag-combine natin para makakagawa tayo ng relatable content na, makukuha, na magagamit din natin at makaka-inspire tayo ng ibang tao. At syempre, hopefully, matuto tayo sa ibang tao as well. Okay, so um, as a brief introduction, ako si Chad. Um, ako ay isang photographer. Tapos isa din akong manunulat. So mahilig akong magsulat at mahilig akong um, umarte. Mag-inarte, hindi, joke lang. Uh, mahilig akong um, mag, uh, mag, magkumuha ng litrato. And same, mahilig, mag, same, mahilig mag inarte hindi. So today I'm going to be talking about Empower Truth. Learning the Art of Thoughtful Empowering Content. So ako bilang isang... isang um, uh, individual, marami akong gustong ginagawa. So, gusto ko ng psychology, gusto ko ng law, gusto ko ng business and economics. Tapos, ang goal ko talaga is to combine all of this knowledge. Kasi, kapag titingnan lang natin from one perspective, syempre, hindi naman kompleto yung perspective na yun. So, maganda talaga na um, we combine a lot of different perspectives into one um, coherent narrative. And today, what I'm going to be sharing with you um would be uh, tips from all of these different perspectives. So um, hopefully, and huwag kayong mahihiya na mag-message din kasi bukas naman yung webinar chat dito sa gilid, huwag kayong mahihiya na mag-share din ng mga stories nyo para dire-diretso tayo na, na um, interactive yung magiging ating um, 
uh, kwentuhan. So, kapag may tatawa kayo, don't feel free to say haha or something para hindi ko naman feel na nagsasalita lang ako dito mag-isa. So, okay? Okay, wala nang wala nang okay. Andiyan pa ba kayo? Ayan, all right. Okay. So, um marami akong iba't ibang professional experiences so and i've traveled a little bit also tapos marami rin ako natutunan mula sa kanila and one of the things which i realized during um, when when i kapag pupunta ako sa iba't ibang lugar at pupunta ako sa uh, marami akong nakakasalamuhan na iba't ibang lahi din what is the connection between apple tesla alphabet saudi aramco meta and amazon so bawal mag google kailangan yung i-share dito sa chat kung ano yung connection sa kanila. Okay? Ano sa tingin niyo yung nagko-connect sa kanila? Top companies, right? Okay, big companies, tech giants. I'm not sure if um if Aram Saudi Aramco is a tech giant. Um pero sige, uh, more or the, more most of them okay, internet connection. <laughs> hindi ko alam kung joke to or hindi ah. <laughs> ano yung nagko-connect sa kanila? Internet connection ko. Nag-umpisa sa garage. They have good systems. Okay. Interesting answers. Um, anything more? Okay. Uh, lahat sila based sa states. Hindi. Um, Saudi. Nasa Saudi yung iba. Um, well, yung isa. Um, strong in big company. Technology. Okay. Sige. Actually, marami naman sa sinabi nyo. Totoo. Pero one of the things um, na na masasabi natin talaga is that, and something na napansin ko rin, is that yung connection between them is number one, they are not only the trillion dollar companies. They also seek to connect people. So, for example, Apple creates the phones, Tesla connects people by driving them to where wherever they need to be. Saudi Aramco is a fuel company which also connects people. So, a huge part of this is all about connecting people. So, we see that the trillion dollar, not just billion dollar companies, ha, the trillion dollar companies, what they're in the business of connecting people. So, makikita natin na ang powerful, powerful. Kung marunong ka makikonect sa people, kung marunong ka na mag-reach out to other people, then you're in good business, right? So, today, what we're going to do is to understand that in a world full of 7.88 billion people, social media connects. Social media is therefore very powerful. So it's um, what connects, alam nyo ba yung tinatawag na six degrees of separation? So ang, ang idea ng six degrees of separation is that everyone, kunyari ako hanggang kay Beyonce or ikaw kay, um, kay uh, I don't know, kay Taylor Swift, like we all know each other from in within six degrees of connection. So interestingly, even with especially with social media, mas lalo ng mas maliit yung mundo ngayon. So social media really connects people. And this is important to remember when we're doing this challenge. Kasi ang challenge natin right now is not only just to highlight um, all the stories that we're going to tell. Kasi madali lang naman eh, madali namang magkwento. Ang question is, may makikinig pa. Paano natin, paano tayo pakikinggan ng mga tao? Kasi at the end of the day, if we tell all these stories but nobody reads them, nobody listens to them, nobody watches them, that's challenging, di ba? Para tayo nagsasalita sa pader. So today, um, I have 20 minutes to talk to you about EmpowerTube. So learning the art of thoughtful and empowering content. So, ang lessons na isha-share ko dito would be from, well, psychology, which is my first love and still my love today, economics, which is something I teach at uh, UP, and also law, um, which is something I also practice. So, I will give you chadvice. So, I will give you five chadvice. Bakit chadvice? Kasi my name is Chad, and these are my... These are my advice. Ayan, okay. Ang galing naman, okay. Thank you. So, chat advice. So, chat advice, number one. Based on psychology, engage emotionally. 
What does it mean when you say engage emotionally? That means that when we plan our stories, kasi you, um, so for some people, uh, madali na gumawa ng TikTok, right? Or some or or Instagram video or post or something. So mag 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 mag, uh, mag video lang sila, for example. And yun na yun. Pero so the best um, posts are ones which engage em- emotionally. So one of the examples sa binigay kanina ni Ira would be yung newscaster, di ba? Na may gumawa siya ng may sense of humor yung pagkakadeliver niya nung nung um, nung um, nung kanyang content. Pero at the same time, hindi lang humor is not the only content or not the only emotion that we can use. There are also a lot of other emotions, katulad ng anger. Well, not anger na magagalit ka ng tao, pero righteous anger or sadness or all of these other emotions. So when you think when you share a story think about how do we engage emotionally kasi otherwise para kang nagbabasa ng um, i don't know mathematics textbook di ba so medyo boring pero kapag meron kang emotion na na pinoportray doon sa story na ginagawa natin malaking bagay yun to make sure that it connects you and your audience so nandun yung magiging connection niya so Before thinking about the video, what do you want the video to be? This, do, do you want it to be sad? Do you want it to be happy? Do you want it to inspire? So many things. So then that's when, and this is this is also this was also given a while ago. We have to now tell a story. Bakit important yung pagtetell ng story, pagsasabi ng kwento? Kasi for example, ako gagawa ako ng video. Oh, eto yung tulay sa Um, sa Manila Bay, right? May tulay ba sa Manila Bay? Um, or eto yung tulay sa sa Kamuning, right? Or eto yung tulay sa sa Isabela. So, okay lang siya. Carry lang siya, right? Pero, kapag yung kwento, gumising ako ng maaga at naglakad ako papunta sa um, sa bahay, tapos na-discover ko. Eto yung tulay sa Kamuning. So, dahil may lead-in, so yung mga tao, habang nag, 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 nanonood sila, gusto nilang malaman kung ano yung susunod rather than um, kung rather than yun na yun di ba so one of the things which is uh, which i remember is the story of Sheherazad kilala niyo ba si Sheherazad sino yung alam ng kwento ng Arabian Nights si Alibaba si Sinbad so ang kwento kasi noon is um Si Shaheris, yung hari ay yung hari kasi ang ginawa niya is lahat ng aasa, yung lahat ng nagiging asawa niya pinapatay niya. So pagkatapos ng wedding night, maghahanimon sila, kinabukasan papatayin. So si Shaherazad, maganda, matalino, tapos um, anak siya ng ministro. So ang ginawa niya, sabi ng sabi niya doon sa hari, okay, kikwentuhan kita. Tapos sinimulan niya ang kwentuhan yung hari. Tapos ang ginawa niya, binitin niya. So, putol yung story. Tapos, sabi niya, okay, the next day, um, syempre, ay, hindi siya pinapatay kasi gusto malaman ng hari kung ano yung nangyari dun sa bida. Yun nga, kaya yung kwento ni Sinbad, di kwento ni Aladdin, kwento ni Alibaba, galing kay Sheherazad yun. So, etong mga kwento na to, um, uh, nakikita natin kung paano the story, how the story saved her life. But in 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 another area, It shows in psychology also how stories capture our attention. Kung kunyari, nagsabi lang si Sheherazad ng like, alam mo ba na ang uh, ang Uranus ay ang pinakamalaking planeta sa buong solar system. Actually, mali. Hindi naman Uranus yun. Pero um, you get the idea, right? Kapag may kwento, mas gusto natin malaman. Mas papanoori natin. Mas tatapusin natin yung content versus kapag wala. Third one, punta naman tayo sa economics. So economics is all about maximization of utility. Kung paano natin uh, mapapalawak yung paggamit natin ng isang bagay. So for example, ang um, magagamit natin ito sa maximizing opportunity to educate and to learn. Anong ibig sabihin nito? Kasi kapag sa social media, Uh, marami sa atin ay nakapag-aral, nakapagtapos ng pag-aaral, or kung hindi man, may access tayo sa information. Meron tayong um, nanonood tayo na, meron tayong internet, nakapanood tayo ng maraming iba't ibang bagay. So, pwede tayong mag-educate 
um, ng ibang tao kasi may privilege tayo na natuto tayo tingin mo na kasama natin mga experts so um, marami tayong natututunan sa kanila pwede natin gamitin yung opportunity na to para ma-share yung natutunan, natutunan natin sa ibang mga tao pero at the same time also lagi nating tatandaan na to keep the door open anong ibig sabihin nito? kasi Potentially rin na kahit mataas ang ating pinag-aralan, marami tayong matututunan sa mga taong um, iba yung perspective or kahit hindi nakapagtapos ng pag-aaral. So we have to maximize the opportunity of social media to educate and to learn. And this is what it means to be engaging. Ibig sabihin, kapag oh, bukas yung pinto mo, kapag nagsalita ka ng um, something, posible na pwede silang sumagot kunya rin may tanong ka ano sa tingin niyo so tell us in your tell us um in the comments below what you like about this thing or something like that diba mas malaki yung engagement so tataas yung engagement mo tapos mas maganda rin na posible rin na may matutunan ka syempre kung sikat ka na hindi mo naman mababasa lahat ng mga comments diba pero at the end of the day makikita mo pa rin na may interaction tapos hindi ka lang nag-educate kasi mahirap naman lagi na ikaw lang yung mag-educate kasi hindi naman natin alam lahat eh. Kahit 10 taon ka, 20 taon ka, 30 taon ka nag-aaral. Pero maganda rin na matututo tayo from other people. Okay? So, so far, um, nagno-notes ba kayo guys? Sinong nagno-notes? Ah, okay. Si Jason nagno-notes. Okay, good, good. Nice. Okay, si Okay, may screenshot aba, may screenshot. Okay, sige, sige. All right, great. Kasi magagamit 'yun. Actually, itong mga sinashare natin sa today ha, pati yung sinashare ng mga experts natin, huwag niyo isipin na para lang sa competition 'to. Magagamit niyo rin 'to sa tunay na buhay even kapag kunyari gusto niyo maging uh, abogado in the future or nagtatrabaho sa office, lahat ng mga bagay na ito useful when you become professionals or if you're already professionals um sa family life kasi all about communication all about being humble intellectual humility um so yun give and take talaga siya okay so yes nagdo notes kasi um mamaya baka may quiz or something di ba hindi natin alam okay tingnan na lang natin tapos chat advice number four. let's go build partnership Partnerships dapat to, kulang ng S. Dapat um, uh, or partnership daw para loyal. <laughs> De, joke lang. Um, part build partnership. So ano ibig sabihin ng building partnerships sa economics? So kunyari, yung mga content creators actually, kaya marami rin sa kanila na um, marami rin sa kanila na uh, ano yung ano yung tawag doon? May tawag sila doon eh. Sinong makakahula ng tawag doon? Starts with C. Yes, very good. Yes. Ah, uh, wow. Ito ano na ang mga ano, mga master na pala to ng mga social media eh. So yes, makikipag-collab ka. Kasi kunyari, um ako mag-isa lang ako. Ang um, ang total media following ko is around siguro mga 11,000, 12,000. So maliit lang 'yun, 'di ba? Pero kapag nakikipag-collab ako sa isa pang tao um na not necessarily in my field, unang-una matututo ako sa kanya kung ano yung Um, gusto niyang sabihin. Pangalawa, yung followers, kunyari may video kami together, yung followers niya, potentially na manunood sa content ko, tapos yung followers ko, manunood sa content niya. So, win-win talaga. So, do-doble, yung magiging um, magiging uh, uh, potential audience namin. But more than that, hindi lang naman kasi nabibilang sa audience yun eh. Yung mahalaga dito is natututo ka, tapos mas marami kang puso na 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 how do you say this you reach more hearts na naaabot mas marami kang naaabot ng mga isip ng mga puso para to to share your advocacies kung ano man yung gusto mong iparating so building partnerships is very important so syempre competition lang naman to di ba uh, so siguro walang masyadong time pero why not baka may mga makilala din kayo dito na gusto makipag-partner kunyari magi interview kayo ng isang tao or ng maraming tao kasi magandang content din yun kasi gusto din ng mga tao na malaman yung iniisip ng ibang tao so it's really up to you but at the end of the day build part building partnerships is very important 
Okay. So today we're gonna give four chat, uh, five chat, right? So first two in psychology, second two in economics, and third is in law. So ano naman yung chat advice for law? Well, one of the things that we have to remember when we're doing all these TikTok videos is always remember dignity and respect for others and for yourself. It's a practical thing um, as well as a moral thing, right? Well, moral thing kasi obviously um, uh, ayaw mong babuyan yung sarili mo or yung pagkatao ng iba. Um, kung pagtatawanan mo, for example, um, gagawin mong content yung something na embarrassing for other people na wala nilang consent tapos alam mong mapapahiya sila, syempre hindi maganda yun. Um, morally speaking, pero also, legally speaking, hindi rin maganda yun. Kasi kung ako yung abogado nung, nung taong vinidyuhan, pwede kitang tirahin um, via libel laws, for example, or privacy laws, and um, civil damages yun. So kung hindi, so marami dito, minor de edad, pero kung hindi naman kayo yung magbabayad, um, dahil civil damages nga, potentially, ang magbabayad yan, mga magulang nyo. So, uh, Sakit ng ulo yun. Tsaka even having a case, kahit hindi sila manalo, mapatunayan lang na nagkamali kayo, mahal yan. Tsaka sobrang hassle. So, remember dignity and respect. Um, ang, ang, ang sinasabi ko dito would be, uh, number one, golden rule, kung ano yung ayaw mong gawin sa sarili mo, um, uh, huwag mong gawin sa iba. Tapos, yung pangalawa is be kind to your future self. Anong ibig sabihin nito? Isipin mo, will my future self be happy na I posted this or magiging proud ba ako na pinost ko to right now? All of these things. And from the legal perspective, it also pre um, protects you kasi uh, hindi ka pwedeng, pwedeng hindi ka mas mamahabla, ihabla ng ibang tao. And at the same time also, um, in the future, yung mga opportunities mo. So, for example, gusto mong mag-apply ng trabaho or gusto mong tumakbo for public office or gusto mong maraming iba't iba pang gawin. So, mahalaga yon. Okay, yes, tama. Think before you click. Okay. So, ayan, eto na. Medyo mabilis ang panahon, no? 20 minutes na agad. So, dahil dyan, magkakaroon tayo ng review. Okay. So, ngayon, Normally, may pa-prize ako kaso nakalimutan kong sabihin sa mga organizers na mag-prepare ng prizes eh. Pero anyway, let's do this for the sake of learning. Number one, first, what you do, engage. Engagement ring. In emotionally, ayan. Okay, tama. Engage emotionally, di ba? So, hindi siya all about engagement ring. All about... Um, reaching out to people through their emotions. Number two is tell a, tell a story. Hindi tell a lie. Ha? Kailangan tell a story. Kasi kapag lie, by the way, um, everything is forever on social media. If you tell a lie, that's really not good. Maximizes opportunity to pabilisang mag-type. Educate and learn. Ayan. Very good. Kasi nga, again, gusto natin mag-educate kasi yung mga natututunan natin, isi-share natin, pero hindi lang tayo ang fount of knowledge. So, pwede rin tayong matuto and we have to be open for that. And mas tataas yung engagement natin kapag mas relatable tayo. Build partnership. Gusto ko talaga yung walang P, walang S yung dulo. No? Ang partnerships, Partnerships, huwag lang isa. O pwede rin naman kung loyal talaga kayo. Ayan. So, yes, may pa-collab pa sa si, si Ivy. May pa-collab, may pa ganun pa. Okay. And then, always remember dignity and respect. Ayan. Very good. So, lahat yata, lahat na today may nakakuha ng 100% sa, sa ay, medyo late si Janela. Partnership pa rin siya. Pero okay lang yan. Um, hindi naman tayo nasa race. Okay, so yan. Ang palakpakan po natin ng isa't isa. And as a conclusion, um, ang daming, ang daming, ang daming problema sa mundo, di ba? Parang right now, may sakit ang mundo. Uh, nakita natin from the beginning na ang daming problema. Nabanggit nga kanina, parang oh my God, di ba? Tapos, um, 
yun pa ang masama, pinag-aaway-away tayo, hindi naman tayong magkakaaway. So, the question is, can we change the world? Can we really change the world? I, I, I'm not, I'm not sure, but maybe if we realize that it's us who has the opportunity to do, to do so, it's us who have the privilege to do so, Yes, exactly. The change I want to see begins with me. But at the same time, something to remember is katulad nga lang sabi ng kanta, we can change the world if we remember that we're all in this together. So, wild cat, sing along. We're all in this together. Yes, okay. So, that's something that we really have to understand. If we all work together, tulad nga nang sabi sa kanta, maybe, just maybe, there's a chance to help solve this problem of transportation in the Philippines. Maraming salamat po, and um, I will see you guys again. Thank you so much, Chad. Ayan. Mukhang ang dami-dami yung natutunan. Napaka-active pa rin. Anong oras na? <laughs> and I really appreciate, you know, yung, yung pag-game si Chad sa dulo. Ano, sayang lang, di tayo nakapag-prepare ng prize. Pero noted yan sa mga organizers. Again, thank you, Chad. Um, do you have, mayroon bang isang question? Or maybe, Chad, can you accommodate pa ba a question? Kung meron... Yeah, I have, I have all the time in the world. Ayan, sige. Kung meron lang, kahit isa, let's accommodate to one question, ano? Kasi you can ask na, I mean, take this opportunity to ask Chad about content and, you know, legal, how to make an legal, empowering vlog. Legal advice pala, annulment. The <laughs> 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 joke lang. <laughs> And then, any, yeah, anything, yeah. So, sorry, Rosa, I was just joking. <laughs> <laughs> Ayan, natawan. Okay. <laughs> Benta okay. naman sa kanila. <laughs> okay, oh, yeah. yeah, you know, but again, thank you so much, Chad. Siguro dahil wala nang tanong, no? Siguro one, one, ano lang, siguro closing statement lang on your end. Yung tipong one, mga one to three tips na dapat nilang tandaan para sa content nila para maging empowering blog. Ah, Okay. Um, but before we we go that there is hey, actually yeah, Jason has a question. Na. Sorry, ito may tanong na pala. Sige, before we we um move forward with my last question or last request. Sige, sagutin mo na din tong tanong ni Jason. Sabi niya, how to engage properly po lalo na doon sa mga nagtrotrol lang sa content. Okay. Ayan. Thank you, Jason. That's a very interesting question. Oh my God. Mahirap talaga. Um, Tito Boy, uh, it's, it's so hard. <laughs> um, it, it, it's, um, that's, it's, it's a very valid question as well. And I think we have to understand. Kasi there are people who troll. As in like talagang nangyaasar lang sila. Wala silang, may man lang talaga sila. Pero meron ding mga tao na talagang out of, um, out of, Uh, not knowing things. Kaya sila nakakapag-comment ng ganun. So I think it's good to know it. Um, kasi, tapos, ang maganda kasi, there are times when your posts go beyond you. At a certain point, wala ka na. I- uh, mute mo na yung notifications kasi may mga tao na ibang sasagot. So yun yung, yun yung, yun yung maganda with it. Especially kapag kunyari may mga viral ka ng posts. So hindi mo na kailangan isa-isahin yan. Um, kasi may mga tao na rin, may mga arm, may army ka na rin na sasagot niyan for you. So, better kapag alam mong troll sila, um, either delete the comment, pero kung buka ng mga legit profile, tapos nagtatanong lang talaga, or kahit, minsan kahit medyo pa ba lang sinasagot ko ng patanong, yun yung, yun yung best way eh. Kasi kapag hindi po ba dapat ganito, hindi po ba dapat ganon, kasi it will force them to think. Kasi kapag sinabi mo, kunyari, na parang, ah, mali yan defensive na sila agad. And again, it's all about engaging emotionally. Pero kapag sinabi mo, hindi po ba dapat ganito? Hindi po ba dapat ganoon? Mapapag-isip sila and hopefully that can spark something in them. Will you be able to change their minds? And a lot of times, probably not. But it can spark, it can plant a seed of doubt. And sabi nga sa Inception, di ba? All it takes is a seed of doubt. Just imagine mo forever nasa dream ka na. Um, but you get the idea. So really, If it's a troll and you know it's a troll, don't engage. You can even delete the comments. If you don't think it's a troll, um, uh, then try to engage. Kasi 
you know, baka naman kasi in the end also, baka naman tama rin sila. So, at the end of the day, be willing to learn, keep an open mind. Thank you, Chad. Ayan, o oh, diba? Nasagot pa. So, alam nyo na ha, alam nyo na yung sasagot nyo pag nag-post na kayo ng content. <laughs> Okay, sige. Um, siguro yun. Although I know, no, from your discussion, actually, nasummarize mo na nga yung mga tips, eh. Pero siguro yun, last statement lang before we end this event tonight. Yung tipong okay. dapat nilang tandaan as content creators. Right. Okay. Um, I think something na hindi ko nabanggit is have fun. Kasi at the end of the day also, um, the creative process, reaching out to people, Uh, being able to touch their minds and hearts is a fun thing to do. Uh, meaning na it's inspiring also for you na you are able to change how people's minds think or even if not change their minds, at least make them think about something. So have fun. And uh, I, I congratulate um, not only the winners, pero lahat ng people taking part in this. Kasi that means you've taken a step towards sharing the advocacy and making sure that everyone's right to a humane transportation system. Oh my God, galit na ako. Um, uh, will push you. So. Thank you. Ayan, bigyan naman natin ng virtual applause si Chad. Ang dami nyo na nga nakuhang Chad advice eh. Chad advice pala. Hashtag Chad advice. Ayan, and lastly of course, don't forget to have fun. Again, thank you so much Chad. Kahit magkaiba tayo ng time, talagang pinagbigyan mo kami. <laughs> Salamat. Ayan. Okay, so... Sobrang busog at lus- busog lusog at umaabaw kayo sa ano ngayon na learnings, knowledge, content, and everything that you would need para sa inyong entries. Pero hindi pa siya natatapos yung event natin. Well, tonight tapos na siya, pero we hope to see you all on site sa Saturday. Tama, FNF? Um, although kanina may nag ng question na no, Um, para daw pag hindi naka-attend. FNF Philippines will record the event on-site and then they will post it sa kanilang YouTube channel. So, subscribe. <laughs> para presa dito content creator, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share the um, FNF Philippines YouTube channel. Doon yung makikita yung um, yung entry for the Saturday event. Okay? So, um, uh, Pasadahan lang natin ng mabilis yung mechanics ng uh, mangyayaring event. I mean, yung competition right after the master class. Um, maybe we can flash the slides. Again. Ayan. Thank you so much, Sigi. Doon tayo sa, sa mismong slide ng mechanics. I guess the second slide ba? Ayan. Okay. <laughs> Sige, pa next slide naman ako. Pwede ba daw mag-bring ng friends sa Saturday pala before natin discuss yung mechanics? So my yes. question is... Oh, ayan, pwedeng pwede naman palang mag-class one. <laughs> okay, sige. So, tapos na tayo sa number one because you all registered na via online form dahil nakapag-master class kayo today, tama? So, the next step is for you to attend, if not, watch the video um for the Saturday event. And then, after that, uh, I know mag-email blast ng FN of Philippines where... you will receive the instructions kung saan niya isesend yung video ninyo. Hindi niya siya directly i-upload sa TikTok ninyo, ha? Hindi pa muna. Okay? I-upload niyo muna siya sa link, uh, as a G-Drive link sa ibibigay sa inyo ni FNF via email. So, dapat tama yung sinan yung email sa online form. So, yung video ninyo, dapat TikTok format, yung pa-vertical. Um, tapos, it's a minimum of 30 seconds. Kaya pwedeng lumagpas, pero hanggang 60 seconds lang tayo. Again, ang content niya dapat is of course about smart mobility, 
uh, sorry, smart uh, freedom of movement, smart mobility, of course, yung climate change, paano natin na-address or natatawid yun to transport. Um, yung mga diniscuss kaninang, kanina ng mga speakers natin. Okay? When po ang deadline? Okay, so, so far, ang deadline natin ay sa, wait lang, sinib ko yun Here. So, ang deadline po natin ay sa July 1, Saturday. And then, July 7, hopefully, announcement of top 10 vlogs. Itong top 10 vlogs na to, yung mag undergo ng another set of review with our mentors. Pero sure na sila na mabibigyan ng 15,000 um, each as contribution dun sa effort ng paggawa ng kanilang video. And yung entry na may pinakamaraming um views or engagement online or sa TikTok, ay makaka-receive ng additional 5,000 pesos. Okay? So, kung may changes man sa dates, uh, again, please don't forget to like the Evan of Philippines page on Facebook para updated kayo. Pero so far, again, ang deadline natin is July 1. July 7 as an announcement ng top 10. And to be to be announced by yung mismong culminating event. Okay, I hope you an I answered all your questions. Again, kung may mga tanong pa kayo na hindi nasagot, especially regarding sa competition or sa mechanics, please feel free to message FNF Philippines sa Facebook um, at FNF Philippines. Sino po pala ang panel of judges? So the committee um, consists of FNF, yung pipili ng top 10, consists of FNF, JCI Manila, and JCI Manila. Tama ba, Grace? Yes, yes. Ayan, yung committee. Committee ng program na to. Okay? Calling once, calling twice, calling thrice. Again, we would like to acknowledge the presence of the of our main partner for this project, no? Ang ati, ang JCI Manila or Junior Chambers International Manila. And of course, with the support of our friends from LSE Studios, Aputure, and Henry's Camera. Again, syempre, thank you so much, FN Philippines, for this wonderful project. Ah, uh, ito daw. Part din pala ng panel, pre-selection panel ang mentors. Okay. Thank you so much everyone. Sana safe kayo makaka or makakauwi na kayo ng safe kung na-stuck kayo somewhere or na-trap kayo somewhere. But uh, see you all on Saturday and sa July 15. Again, I'm Roselle and yeah, have a great rest of the night. Thank you.